He was sent alongside Matt Jordan. Coffeyville, this is a big game for him. Number six in the nation rose one more spot last week over their after their victory over Fort Scott. And this could set up what could be a very important game next week. Obviously, Matt, though, you got to take care of the Bronkbusters. They're also ranked coming into this game at number 14. Yeah, you, you do have to take care of this game. You cannot overlook this one as you look towards that indie game because you know they're undefeated. Uh, for you know They're going to be undefeated in that matchup. You cannot overlook girl, uh, the Bronkbusters in this one because of that. And, um, you know, this is one that you had circled at the beginning of the season anyway, especially after the Hutch victory. And uh, as we, you know, coaches meet at the center line here, we're, we're getting real close to kickoff. A lot of uh, festivities throughout the day. And then we have the honoring of the basketball team tonight. So picking up a win would be very critical uh, in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. And two teams that have really been led by their defense for much of the season. Caulfield, their prolific defense, taking on a Garden City team that only averages or only gives up about 16 points per game. And actually blanked Dodge City last week. So this has the potential to be a low-scoring game. Of course, we'll see if Confield's offense really kind of finds the stride that they had in the second half last week against Fort Scott. As you and I said a couple times last week, if you come out like you did against Fort Scott last week, this Garden City team is going to punish you. Yeah, they are. I mean, you can't come out uh, slow uh, in this game like you did last game. Uh, luckily, they had that game to kind of wake themselves up a bit as we you know, move through the final three games of the season through Fort Scott into this one. Uh, but, uh, you know, interesting, looking at... Uh, the, this Fort Scott, or looking at, uh, sorry, this Garden City team, um, they play really good first halves, and then they struggle in the second half. If you look at their losses uh, to both Independence and Hutch, they had halftime leads that they uh, squandered that uh, led to uh, big ha second halves for both uh, Indy and Hutch. So, you know, in this game, Coffeyville, if you get down, you know, in the first half and it's a one-possession game, don't really need to worry because they've yet to be able to put, against upper-level talent, they've, uh, upper half of the Jayhawk Conference, they've yet to be able to put a, a full game uh, up against. Uh, it's been kind of a weird uh, season for Garden when you look at uh, the teams that they beat. Started off the season winning 76-24 uh, to 24, uh, against Fort Scott, then kept it close, just beat 15-6 to 6, uh, on the road at Highland. Then they lose to Indy 26-13, had a 13-10 lead at halftime. They lose to uh, Hutchinson 24-16, had a 13-10 lead at halftime. And then a big week last week, 49-0, so maybe they righted the ship uh, just a bit as they get ready for this Coffeyville matchup. Yes, yeah, the Garden City team that a lot of people had high hopes for. We're in the top five after the second week of the regular season. Obviously, the two losses in a row to Independence and Hutchinson kind of pushed them down there a little bit. But you see the NGAA rankings still have a little bit of faith here in the Bronkbusters uh, as those two losses are to two pretty solid teams. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a 60-second timeout. And when we come back, our very own Matt Jordan has a chance to sit down with Red Ravens head coach Jeff Liker. We'll have that interview for you coming up after a one-minute break. Again, you're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, Kate Wissan. Roland Chevrolet Buick and Independence says we'll buy your vehicle for top dollar in only five minutes. That's right. Roman's is your elite buying center for Southeast Kansas. Roman's pays more than any other dealership. Plus, Roman's will buy your used car even if you buy your next one elsewhere. And they'll buy it over the phone in five minutes. Your elite buying center is Roman Chevrolet Buick. 2313 West Main in Independence. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Braselton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Helping you move forward. That's what Coffeyville Community College does. Whether you want to increase your ability to advance at work, learning to earn a two-year, or just want to expand your horizons, Coffeyville Community College can help. And CCC is flexible, offering a traditional college setting. Fast eight-week classes or even online classes. 
CCC can meet your needs your way. Call CCC at 620-251-7700 or visit them online at coffeeville.edu. We are Coffeeville Community College. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet ole steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet ole steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Let nothing stand between you and the tree stand with this fast, durable Kubota Sidekick. Featuring a gas-powered engine that delivers a top speed of 40 miles per hour. Best-in-class acceleration and handling with cargo and strength to haul what needs hauling. All backed by a two-year, thousand-hour warranty. Get ready for hunting season with the Kubota Sidekick. Visit your local Kubota dealer today. Go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Or go to Roman's Outdoor Power and see Jeff and Chance in Independence or Mike and Kevin in Bartlesville. At Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, we take seriously our responsibility of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and health care you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. Customer service is the top priority at Gillum Liquors and Coffeeville. That's what sets them apart. Gillum's tries to add a little extra in the way of personal service. How? Well, they keep up on customer favorite wines and spirits. Check out the local favorites on display. And if you don't see your favorite, if it's available for sale in Kansas, Gillum will special order just for you. It's all about customer satisfaction at Gillum Liquors. For the largest wine selection, vast array of spirits, and the coldest beer in town, visit Gillum Liquors, 1713 West 8th in Coffeeville. Open seven days a week. You're listening to US 98.1 KUSN. I'm Matt Jordan alongside the head coach of the Coffeeville Red Ravens, Coach Jeff Liker. Coach, you guys are coming off a win, but definitely had some things to improve upon from that game. You, know, you look at the score, 31 to three. It's a it's a good win, but it was a lot closer to that until the fourth quarter. And you know there was you definitely looked like a team coming off a, of a bye. Um, mental mistakes on defense, jumping off sides. Two, fu- two muff punts and offense that took a bit to, uh, to get going. Didn't really find rhythm until late uh, late second half. You know, you said it right, Matt, it was a bye. It was hard to just keep people tuned in. And, you know, kids compare scores. They look at games and as much as we try to tell them you have to play this one as it's a college football game. These are college football players. They're going to come they're going to practice and prepare. They know what the scores have been like. And um, Fort Scott did a good job of coming out with, you know, they threw the ball over the place the first few weeks. And they came out with a running quarterback that was a little hard to get a hold of as he was, um, you know, taking, taking off and running when he, when he could. And then we shot ourselves in the foot a number of times with jumping off on third and four, five-yard penalty, first down, you know, stuff that, we feel like teams don't really earn, but we gave it to them because we were played undisciplined and not were watching the football. Dropped a couple punts that allowed them to have it back. We dropped a couple other fumbles. That's not been like us to turn the ball over, and it was four turnovers for us, zero for the opponent. Usually it's flipped. The crazy thing about it while you play, I mean, we had 50-some snaps to their 80-some. Our defense only gave up three points when it was all said and done. They had the ball 35 minutes to our 22. We we had to sit a couple guys out because they didn't take care of the bye week properly. That may have had a little bit of an effect as well. And um, we we played him, you know, we got him in the second half. We had to sit him out. But we came out and hit two or three big ones in a hurry in the third or the fourth, I guess, when we first when we first got going again through the air. So I mean, it, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't real thrilled about. It. The way we played, and, uh, and it's hard because I should have, I should appreciate the fact we won, but the way we did it, you know, just sloppy and and not what we want to be. But you know, we we put that behind us. Now we're moving on, and we have no choice but to get ready for a couple of really good opponents. And Garden City being the first. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Garden and Indy with, with the last two games of the season, a lot riding on the last two games of the season, um, you know, with the mental mistakes the defense made. Other than that, they played pretty well. They kept you guys in it. Um, you know, you know other, other teams, you could, you could see yourself getting down by a couple scores. I mean, it could have easily been 21-3 or 28-3. Um, and, you know, start the game with Will Bone. Can't really get anything going offensively. You, you end up bringing Jackson Thompson back in and it took him a while to get comfortable. Until the fourth quarter, essentially, for him to settle in, and then when he did settle in, he settled in. He had two really good 56-yard uh, touchdown pass, 83-86 yard touchdown pass. So um, you, you just you see how talented he is, but it did take him a bit to, to really get going. You know, Matt, when we opened the game up, we took some shots and we dropped two touchdown passes. Will put the ball on the money. Um, we had a run play right up the pipe from Star, who's usually pretty patient. Uh, missed a, a seam that would have just sent him straight on through. The safety didn't fit correctly, but he shot off to the right into a pile. And um, so we, as coaches, look at it as three opportunities on the first drive. If we just hook up on one of those three, we could have got off to a quick start. And it may have been just our, our whole uh, approach might have been different. But, boy, we just wallowed around that whole first half. And, and we went for fourth down two or three times just trying to – force the issue and and uh, of course they're playing nine ten up in the box and, and making it tough and looking back we should have threw it more just to soften it up but i'm stubborn enough that we're going to try to do what we do and, and count on the o linemen to be the, the the run game protectors and be the tempo setters and eventually we got going and star popped something to get us started and then jack came in and or, you know, got it going second half with a couple of big plays that, that got us away. While, all the while, the defense is keeping them at bay, you know. But like I said, we gave them four or five more uh, possessions. Just be, We had them stopped, and we just give up possessions because of fumbles, jumping off. We should have been fourth down already, or at least they had a, should have had to try a play at third and four to see if they could get the first down. But we just gave them a fresh set of downs on jumping off on hard counts. So there's stuff we can work on, and hopefully we'll correct some of that because everybody's going to do that to us. I mean, we're ready to tee off and get going, and, and that's the nature of the game, but you still got to wait for the ball to move before you're allowed to, to get across the line. Yeah. So anyway, those are things that we would hope after this many weeks of practicing and playing that and talking about it and watch the ball, you know, all the yelling about thinking about what you got to do, back up a hair, see it delivered before you go you know and then then go go to work so we'll try again uh this was the first time all year you guys lost the turnover battle i believe i mean this is this is a ball hawking defense it likes to uh you know force turnovers wasn't able to do that but they did they still played well outside of that and then so you know sometimes i think maybe i, I look for things that maybe aren't there or see things that aren't there in the season i've noticed you're, you're very you're always quick to change running backs um, but in this game, I noticed it was like uh, you get a, a few, like Star Thomas got a few series, and then Dorian Lewis got a few series, and then Torrance Farmer got a few series, as opposed to maybe Star getting a couple plays and then changing Dorian on a certain drive. It was they got their own drive. Was that something different, or you know, just trying to change it up with the last you few know, games? We're we're so top heavy with but with really I feel like good quality backs, and it's just hard to keep them all happy, you know. So. We gave them possessions. We gave them series to see if they could, you know, pop out and, and make a play. And, uh, you know, each of them had nice runs. And along the way, it's just a matter of who's going to get it, put it in the end zone, make that last man miss and, and get to the end zone. We've seen it enough to expect it. So, you know, we got a fourth back we think is pretty dang good. We were hoping to get in the game, but just as the way the thing unfolded, the fourth quarter was still a 10-3 to game going in, and we just couldn't rotate that one. And probably, looking at it, you really should only probably play two, you know, and just deal with it. But we got into that year where you where you uh, didn't count in the spring, and you're running through a lot of kids, and, you know, you see a lot of good things out of all of them, and you want to get them out there in front of people to see if they can get on the radar, too. So we're still thinking about their future a little bit and while we're trying to win games. But um, So, yeah, I mean, every week will be different just on how we feel, how Coach Rolls is kind of the one that handles all the backs and tries to keep them all right there. You know, and that's not easy because they're all pretty high-profile guys that 
that want to be a big factor and, and obviously will only go as well as the old line goes and, and so we had some good things happen uh, but just we didn't get it done early enough to start spreading uh, you know spreading out get more people in there and maybe get more uh, opportunities for other kids we didn't get that as much as we had hoped based on you know, again coaches are probably as guilty too of looking head to head this is what they did against them this is what we did we ought to do this and but those guys have been told by their coaches, you know, this is your Super Bowl. You got an undefeated ranked team coming in here. And you, how are you gonna how are you gonna defend your area here? And they did a great job of doing it, you know, until finally we hit a couple things. Maybe maybe humbled us a little bit too to get us back to where we could work with the kids again. Not that they were not workable, but we get a little bit high on ourselves over a few games and we got a whole season still ahead of us. You'd rather, you know, this be the case where you get hit in the mouth by Fort Scott, keep it close, and, you know, come out as a winner as opposed to, you know, Garden come in and hit you in the mouth, get out on you 28 nothing, and then you can't get back on it, or, you know, Indy do the same thing. So, you know, it's kind of good that you're able to defensively play good enough to keep yourselves in it and instead of a, a team that maybe airs out the ball a little bit more. Because Fort Scott, I mean, their offense wasn't built to score quickly. They want to grind you. And, I mean, that's why the time of possession was so Well, high. they've been through it. And that's why the scores were getting way out of hand. In, in my world of uh, being a head football player, yeah, when I was an OC, I wanted to throw it around and just get stats and, you know, let people think that we knew what we were doing. But when you get to be a head coach and you're looking out for both sides, you better take care of the football and run the football and try to get some uh, stability in your run game that you're controlling the football. Well, Fort Scott did that. They switched gears. We hadn't, we hadn't prepared for that QB that played that day. He played the whole full quarters. Managed the game pretty decent. They didn't turn it over. They just didn't they weren't able to pop something that gave them a shot in the arm. I credit the defense for hanging in there, but as often as I had to go out there, it's frustrating as coaches got with them getting another possession because of jumping off sides or whatever. Kids are battling until we got ahead from them, ahead of them with a couple of big strikes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think he'd thrown three passes all season, two or three, I think, coming into that game. So It was a different kid. Yeah. You know. um, so, looking at this matchup with, with Garden City, as a team that does like to throw, does like to throw the football around a bit, um, they've had some injuries at the quarterback position, uh, but it, they seem to have their guy that they, they want to have coming into this game. So, how do you look at, at lining up defensively? You guys have some great defensive backs, and so how do you look? Well, they played three guys at Q. Um, one's kind of known to be a thrower, not a great runner. The other one's more of a runner, but can throw it. And then the other one's just kind of a manager, you know, of, of what he's what they're asking him to do. They feed off their defense, waiting for the offenses to make mistakes and then try to capitalize. You know, they went from Dodge went from five hundred yards against Fort Scott to thirty against Garden. That's the story. I mean, we got the, the total yardage that Dodge put up on Garden was 30. Now, they had some nice runs, but then they had a couple of snaps that went backwards and count for negative yards, but that's how the 30 apparently came out. But um, So, they're, you know, Highland beats uh, gets beat 15-6 to six by Garden. So, Garden's offense didn't get it going. Their defense kept them at bay. We got enough points to win the ball game, 15 to six, and it's tough to travel travel up to, to Highland from the Garden. I mean, it's just a long trip, and it's always a tough trip for everybody that goes up there just to just to get ready to go and play. But so again, you can't compare head to head, but you do, you know, yeah. just to try to see how somebody else played somebody. So you know, we we'll have to deal with whatever quarterbacks in there. Uh, number ten is the thrower. I mean, capable of putting it down the field. They also can run their, their, their spread with him and hand it off. And uh, their own line's physical. They can provide plenty of running room for what they do. And we've just got to be able to answer and not give up a big play, not let, let somebody skate, skate out of the box and hit the, hit the home run ball. Um, they're going to count on their defense to, to 
get them some breaks and, and maybe even scoop and score or something if you make a mistake offensively. So that that's what we've got to guard against is we've got to be solid with the football and try to get points when we can and make them have to do a little more throwing than they really would like to do in, in my way of thinking because they really would rather run the football if they can and control the ball like I said most teams if they're pretty good at it, you're going to control the football with your offensive run game and then if you can still throw around enough to get you a first down here or there but I don't think they're a monster home run throwing team but they're capable of doing that this weekend they can do it 10 times you know who knows that's what you got to be on guard for we talk about not wanting to look at other games you look at two games they've lost um leads at halftime in both games and then the lack of being able to get anything going. I think the scoreless in both matchups. They may have gotten a field goal um, against Hutch, but for the most part they were outscored in the second half um, just because their defense eventually wears out from their offense not being able to sustain any drives. Matchup wise, I think you know you guys match up with him pretty well in my mind because you do similar things. You guys want to you know, turn people over. You want to play good defense and control the control the clock. But on your side, Jackson Thompson has been as a at throwing the football with one exception. It's mistake free. One one interception on the season. His touchdown interception ratio is incredible for for a college guy like this. So you know, I feel like it does benefit you a bit with the way you guys play matching up uh, against the, how they want to play too. You know, we got to protect. We got to run block. And their defensive front is really their their uh, strength, um, and they come after you. Boy, they're relentless. I mean, it's it's impressive to watch. We've got to hook up on some edge. We've got to bust through there and make some runs. We got to soften it up somehow in order to give ourselves a chance to, to do what we want to do offensively. If we have trouble, it's going to be well, the pressure goes back to our defense to put a stop to them, and they gain confidence. So, yeah, it's a four-quarter game. We you know it's going to take all four to go out and try to hang in there and win a ball game, especially this first weekend of the two. Um, we told the kids that from day one. They're going to get ready to get into a big-time physical battle. And uh, they better come with it or it's going to be a long evening. And I'm sure, and not that you guys are focused, because you focus one game at a time, but you got to think Garden is, is at least the coaches know that they come out and beat you, and then Indy takes care of you, then they move up to the two spot, and you guys fall to the three spot. Um, so that's got to be, you know, that's on their mind with, you know, telling you, you come in here and you can get yourselves in a better position for the, well, they've the got season. To, they've got to knock us off, and then they got Butler the next yeah. weekend. They've got to basically win both of those to get to that spot yeah. because we could obviously we could lose two in a row yeah. and but those guys if Garden loses the final weekend that's their third so we still stay yeah. too so there's a lot of scenarios I mean yeah. I'd rather not talk about those things oh, yeah. until we just get you know I mean I mean you talk about it but you play this weekend and we find out what happens the following weekend and then we put the playoffs out on the table and here we go yeah. and it all starts over everybody's got a shot again that's the fun part yeah. about it. Now, you could knock somebody off out of the title picture, you know, because of seeing somebody twice. Those are things that are still out there, too. Just make it make it exciting. Yeah, it's hard to beat a team twice when you get to that situation. It's, it's hard, to be. To beat, yeah, hard to beat a team twice. So, all right, well, good luck. Uh, it's You know, it's a big weekend. Um, you know, first ever Dan yeah. Flores tailgate party, which yeah. is good to see, you know, you know, remembering him for the hopefully future. Um, basketball teams being honored at halftime for their accomplishments. So it's a big weekend. Um, your final final home game as far as the regular season goes. So it's, it's going to be a good weekend. Uh, a lot of a lot of people being honored and just just an all around great weekend. Yeah. Fun. Open up like you did last week. Yeah, I mean, Garden's going to want to look to set the tone early in this one offensively, and the uh, Red Ravens, who did not force a turnover last week, going to look to force maybe a turnover early in this one or try to get a three and out, get their offense on the, on the field so they can strike early in this one. Lawson is set to kick it away. 15 minutes up on the clock. Cockfield 5-0. Garden City 3-2. Rockville trying to improve on that number six ranking they entered today's game with. Austin approaches the football, the kick is away, and we are underway. Here in Garden City, that kick going to sail out the back of the end zone. He is kicking into the wind there, or behind the wind. But the wind, yeah, wind at his back, and it is picked up pretty substantially. Wasn't really blowing when uh, 
you know, we started uh, pregame here, but it's been picked up a bit. The fire alarm has been turned off, so either we're all okay or we're not going to be. Who knows? We'll find out here in just a little bit. But the touchback means that the drive will start here at the 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 here for this Garden City Broncosters offense. So we'll take a look here at the offense for the first time tonight, starting at QB. Looks like that's going to be Rhett Reisdorf. Of course, the Broncosters, they'll use several quarterbacks throughout the course of this game. Different quarterbacks filling different roles. But is Reisdorf in at quarterback as he takes a snap, takes the handoff on first down, throws across the middle, pass is complete. And he's going to shake up a couple tackles, open field in front of him. He's to the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. He's finally taken down about the 18-yard line. A huge pass play sparked by a broken tackle. That's not the way you want to open up for Nottingham. No, it is not. That's exactly what Gardner would like to see is they pick up a huge play into Red Raven territory and into the red zone. Just one broken tackle, slant plays, that's that's what they're good for. If you can break one, you're likely spun free. Sean Ari Charles on the catch. So first down and ten, ball going to be on the 18-yard line. Broncosters now into Coffeyville red zone territory for the first time tonight. Here's a handoff. Coming up the middle of the field, that'll be a player. I don't believe who's actually on my roster. Nope, there we go, got the number for you. That'll be William Knight on the carry. Gets a couple. Make that four, second down and six. Shotgun formation here for Reisdorf. Four wide receiver set, sends a man in motion. Another handoff here on second down, up the middle of the field goes Knight. Going to get to the 10 yard line, that'll set up a third down and short, third down and two. Garden City offense looking good. You got back to back four yard runs after a big play and have it third and short. Uh, first down sets you up, first and goal. So third down and looks to be about two. Need to get to the eight-yard line. Minute gone by here in quarter number one. Reisdorf again going to be shotgun formation, it seems, with three wide receivers left. Coffee going to force that safety to go over the top. That'll be, of course, Brennan Scott. Flag here before the snap, and it looks like we might have false start. That'll back the Brockbusters up a bit. Yep, you saw the linebackers pointing there. One of the, uh, I think it was the left tackle that moved that time for Garden City, and uh, that will take a third and short, turn it into a third and long, and that's uh, that's what you want to want to see offense making mistakes if uh, after you've given up some pretty good plays. So third down and seven now. We'll back it up here to about the 10-yard line or the 15-yard line. Coffeeville in the secondary. Looks like Saquon Frazier over on the right-hand side. Also starting today, that's going to be Marco Collins. Bringing to score Scott, again in at safety. Tyler Mullins also part of the secondary as well. Reisdorf takes the snap, takes the handoff. Going over to his left, now across the middle. Pass is complete. Touchdown, Garden City. Now a flag after the catch is made. Yeah, it's going to be a late hit. It's going to be a personal foul penalty. Uh, unnecessary roughness on Coffeeville. Uh, I think he was trying to see if he could jar the ball loose. But it was already a touchdown, so it, it is going to be a, a late hit. So Garden City comes in just a minute 43 is all they need. Three plays to march down the field. Two slant routes across the middle. Coffeyville quickly knows what they need to stop. Yeah, the slant play has worked. One-on-one uh, -on -one coverage uh, been exploited early in this one, and uh, you're going to need to see uh, Coffeyville step up here and. Uh, Offensively and try to try to tie this one back up. No indication just yet as the referees still meeting here about this one. Both teams in their PAT formations. There'll be a late hit called against Brennan Scott. And that penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. And so six points on the board for Garden City. 15 yards over the middle. On the catch, Mark Hill Singleton. Garden City is on to attempt the PAT. Snap is good, hold is good, and the kick is up. And it is through the uprights and also good. So just a minute 43 into this one, Coffield with some work to do. And 14 yards, 15 yards over the middle. And they'll trail this one 7 to nothing. Back in a minute, you're listening to Red Ravens football. US 98.1, King was sent. Breathe easy. No problem with the Lennox Healthy Climate System from Lease Cooling and Heating and Independence. Allergens, animal dander, dust, all of these can really affect your quality of breathing. But with the Lennox Healthy Climate System, you can stay in control of the air of your home. This system takes care of all air aspects, from humidity levels to indoor pollutants. Air is life. 
Enjoy perfect comfort with the Lennox Healthy Climate System, available at Lee's Cooling and Heating, 118 South 8th and Independence. Call 620-331-2310 or visit leescooling.com. Hey, Coffeeville. This is your favorite banker from Community State Bank, and I just popped into your favorite radio station to let you know that interest rates are at an all-time low. So if you've been looking to refinance your home, now is the time. Give us a call at 251-1313 or stop by and see us at 1414 West 11th Street. This has been your favorite banker, Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back here at Venner's Memorial Stadium in Coffeyville, 13-17. Left in quarter number one, Coffeyville trailing in this one. Give up a 15-yard touchdown pass across the middle. Rhett Reistorf to Martiel Singleton. So the kickoff will be from the 50-yard line as the football blown off the tee. Again, a strong win here tonight in Coffeyville, But they will be kicking off from the 50-yard line. Two men back to receive for the Ravens. It'll be Bryce Childress and Javier Batiste back at about their own goal line. Now but we see a return. Yeah. Unless you, of course, see a high kick here, which we might see a fair catch. And, of course, fair catch within the 25 just brings you out from the 25. So we'll see what we do here as we actually get a hold. There's a low line drive kick, kind of the opposite. We are going to get a return here, so it's going to be Batiste on the return. Runs into his own men, though, and that might have actually not been the choice to make there. Really didn't have much of a choice with the kick. Coffee going to be pinned back deep in their own position. So this is kind of what we were talking about. You can't afford to have a slow start here tonight. That was about the slowest start you can have. Well, yeah, I mean, it was just a really quick start for Garden City. And, you know, this Coffeeville defense tends to be ball hockey and, and can be overly aggressive. And sometimes when you try to make a play on the ball and uh, you, you don't you miss the ball and the player gets it, it can lead to a big play. That's exactly what we saw. Now it's up to Jackson Thompson, this offense, to, to strike uh, back. Pistol formation to start tonight's ball game. Jackson Thompson in shotgun. Makes the handoff, goes across the middle himself on first down, but the pass is dropped. Isaiah Taylor, the intended receiver on the play, trying to dive across the middle, but the ball hits the turf, second down and 10 up coming. Trying to go in the first place, slant themselves here to see if they can break something. Bring up second and 10, and, you know, uh, Garden, that was a nice little strike, but Coffeyville settles into this one. We've seen Garden struggle offensively, although, like I said, last week, 49 points against uh, the Dodge City team may have woken them up. Got to figure it's got them feeling pretty good here today, and of course, they want to make the upset. They want to get back potentially into that top 10 in the NJCAA rankings. Coffee are going to have to give it their all here tonight. Shotgun formation. Here's a handoff. Star Thomas on second down. Nowhere to go. He's hit behind the line. And he's taken down well behind the line. It'll be a loss about two or three. And I'll bring up third down and long. This Garden City front is very good. It, it, Coach Liker knew uh, running against this was going to be difficult. So now you've got third and 11. You're in danger. You, you go... Uh, four plays, 75 yards of touchdown for Garden City, and now you're in danger of going three and out yourself. This is uh, definitely not ideal for Coffeyville. So third down and long. It'll actually be third down and 11. Ball on the Coffeyville 14-yard line. He trips to the left. Thompson shotgun with Thomas in the backfield. Thompson takes a snap, looking to pass on third down. Looking to go over the middle, has Isaiah Taylor. That pass is caught just beyond the first down marker. Be game about Thompson, had, Thompson had all the time in the world there to throw and just set the pocket, waited for Taylor to come open right there at the line to gain and, and put it right on him. So Kaka converts on his first third down tonight. Across the middle, Isaiah Taylor, his first reception of the day. For the first time tonight, looks like Thomas will now go under center. High formation, two wide receivers, one to each side. Isaiah Taylor sends off to the left. Looks like on the far side, that might be Chris Bellamy. Thompson takes a snap, takes the pitch, now rolling out to his left. Looking over the middle, had his tight end briefly, but it's a little bit overthrown. That would have been Kale Harbor, the intended receiver. But let him a bit too much. Again, second down and ten. Nice little fake. And the bootleg after the fake pitch, and it's so hard to try to throw on the run back across your body. Put it where where Harbor could make a play on it, but just couldn't quite come up with it. So Thompson, one for three on this opening drive, brings up second down and ten. Two wide receivers sent off to the left this play. Ken Thomas and Ferrante Cutler in the backfield. Cutler, the big fullback, and of course Thomas, we know what he can do. Thompson takes a snap, going to hand it off here. Thomas running down the field here on second down, but again, a pile just going to form. 
More momentum eventually going to be called here, but it'll be eventually no gain. And again, another third down and long. They'll give him a yard. Third down and nine. So, so far, incomplete pass on first down, short run on second down, and brings up a third and long in the second time on this drive. We'll see if uh, they, he has time to throw and can pick up another third and long. Receivers have been there. We saw that on first down. He seems to put the ball in the hands of the receiver. Shotgun formation with three wide receivers out. Thomas, of course, still in the backfield. Thompson takes a snap, looking to pass. Four men coming for Garden City, but he's going to be taken down from behind. Tried to tuck it and take it himself. He's tackled from behind. Kevin Abrams for Wayne on the tackle. That'll bring us our first fourth down of the game. Fourth down and seven. Coffee going to bring on the punting unit. Felt the pressure and tried to uh, make something happen and having receivers open. And that's just a good coverage play by Garden City. And now you bring out... Uh, Everly with the wind in his back, a chance to put field position here uh, again for Coffee. But you can't outkick your coverage, though. That's the only thing you got to worry about. Everly, the punter, back to receive Keelon Kennedy. The snap is good, and the kick is away. That one's going to be carried by the wind. This one's going to be fielded, or actually, nope, going to bounce it about the 12-yard line. Takes a good Coffee Bill Hawk and run sideways out of bounds. So Garden City will have a deep field to traverse. You're leading this one 7 0. They're going to start their own 10 yard line. Everly is a weapon as a punter. Just absolutely flipping field position. Now, defensively, you got to watch the slants, make your tackles, and see if you can get the ball back for your offense. Hoffman's opening drive takes about three minutes off the clock. 10 23 remaining here in the first quarter. And 7 0 in favor of Garden City. Glad you could be joining us here tonight, either on US 98.1 KUSN or online on YouTube. U.S. 98.1 Coffeyville YouTube channel. Reisdorf takes the snap on first down, hands it off, Knight up the middle. You'll get about four here on first down, set up a second down and six. Run game's working too. I mean, outside of the penalty, they really had, you know, four yard, two four yard runs, uh, two nice passes, and another four yard run there. So. Who's listed as the third man on the Garden City two deep I received. See what his stats are for the season. He's been the one who's getting the start here tonight. 44 carries, 306 yards, five touchdowns. A couple injured players on this one as well, so I'm not sure how much this one's been updated. Knight with the carry here on second down as well. Cuts it upfield. Gets to about the, well, just shy of the 20. See where they spot it. It looks to be about the 18-yard line. Nope, going to give him the 19. It'll be third down and one. Dedrick Talbert is the team's league rusher, 66 yards. For 66 carries for 354 yards. Talbert, the leading rusher, but we have not seen him just yet. Has been Reichstorf and Knight in the backfield. So third down and one, shot confirmation with trips to the right. And off here to Knight, trying to punch forward, trying to get to the 20. I think he's got it. Definitely As he close. Falls forward. It's definitely going to at least be close. You're right. But it looks like he did get it, and it looks like we'll have a new set of downs. Got the one yard they needed, so first down and ten. Ball now on the Garden City 20. Short little run that time. Garville's defense did a good job of not letting him get too much. Unfortunately, they only needed the one. So first down and ten. Again, ball on the 20-yard line. Man set in motion over towards the right. And off to Knight once again, trying to bounce it off to the left, but he's taken down. Looks like that might have been Jalen Schuler who gets the ball there. It'll be a short game. Give him a yard, second out of nine. I'd say that's the best play so far defensively that the uh, Red Ravens had, forcing them to the one-yard gain. And, you know, watching these corners, they haven't taken a shot on this drive yet, but uh, Liker and the defensive coordinator definitely comfortable with leaving his uh, corners on islands out there. Uh, one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're definitely talented enough for it. Yeah, four men up front, four linebackers, one man over the top. Here's a handoff right side. William Knight once again going to cut it up field. Has some room. Going to get to about the 30. It'll be a gain of nine. And a new set of downs here for Garden City. Got a nice little hole cut through there and picked up the first down. So they now uh, had the big play. Now on this drive, they're being methodical. Interesting not to note on that play, Brendan Scott actually playing more like a linebacker. Only over the top was Tyler Mullins. So had the correct personnel for that one. You definitely had four men up front. Just too big of a hole to really stop night to night, or at least so far. 
Again, four men up front for Caulfield. Here's a handoff. That'll be Talbert on the carry this time round. Shakes off one tackler. Going to be taken down around the 36-yard line. It's another large chunk here. Second down and four. Uh, right now, Garden City is just manhandling this uh, Cogdell defense. They're going to have to step up at this point. I mean, it is uh, you know, big run after big run. And uh, really just controlling the game right now are the Bronx Busters. So they'll give up five, actually. Second down and five. Put that ball on the 35-yard line of Garden City. Four wide receivers set. Again, Talbert in the backfield. Takes the handoff. Rice Dwarf rolling out to his left. In some trouble. Able to dump it off to his receiver. But he's going to be taken down one-on-one. Reese Collier with the tackle. Catch was made over there. I believe that was. That was Sino Jarman on the catch. That will bring up another third down here. Jalen Schuler came on a linebacker blitz there on the blind side of Rice Dwarf. And Rice Dwarf just barely got away from it. So another third down. Second third down of the drive here for Garden City. Back to a four wide receiver set. Schuler showing blitz. Now Reisdorf looking to the sideline, making adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to 10 seconds. Reisdorf now going to take the snap, looking over to his left, going for the out route. It's caught. Jarman on the catch, breaks one tackle, but Collier is there to at least save a few more yards, but it's another first down here. As again, Congo gets aggressive and pays for it a little bit there. Well, it was uh, giving a little cushion pressure and then... Uh, or gave a little cushion and then come up to make the hit uh, was Frazier and uh, just slipped right out of uh, the tackle there by the Bronx Buster wide receiver. So a new set of downs, first down and 10, ball now on the Garden City 48. And now a whistle before the snap, and it looks like we'll have a timeout taken here by the Ravens. So Caulfield going to take its first timeout of the first half. Took a timeout right alongside him back in 60 seconds. 7 to nothing, 6 10 remaining in quarter number one. You're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, KBSN. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle? Or even a boat? Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeyville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Beats at 620-251-1970 and relax. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, first down and 10. Ball in the Garden City, 48-yard line. Bronkbusters control the football. Fake handoff. Reisdorf looking over to his right. Has a man in the flat. That ball is going to be caught. Gets across the 50, past the 45, to about the 44 of Coffeyville. On the catch, that's going to be Devin Hodges. Into the game at tailback for the first time. Actually lining up at wide receiver. He's listed on the roster as a tailback. But makes the catch. Kane of Aiden here on first down. Garden City into Confield territory. There was no one within 15 yards of Hodges that time when he caught that football. Second down and two. Again, football now on the Confieville 46 yard, 44 yard line. Eisdorf takes a snap. Here's a handoff. Looking for the short gain. Not going to get it just yet. Four momentum going to be called the William Knight on the carry. First man to the ball there. That was the defensive lineman, Darius Lionel, for Coffeyville. And another third down, third one of the drive. This time, though, third down and one. Big third down opportunity coming up here for the Red Ravens defense. Garden City, they have excelled in these short down situations. Already seen a third and two and a third and four converted here on this drive. Four wide receivers set with Knight in the backfield. Reisdorf looking back over towards the sideline. Play clock down to about five seconds. Has to do something quickly with it here. Down to three, down to two. Now hurrying up. Going to get the snap off here. It's a handoff to Knight, but a whistle. It looks like we may have got a timeout taken by Garden City just before the snap. So a bit of a miscommunication there for the Brockbusters leads to Garden City taking its first timeout. Once again, we will take a timeout too. 4.49 left in the first quarter. 7-0 our score. Caulfield trailing the Bronx Busters. You're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1 KUSN.
Want to learn a new language so it will actually stick? Try Babbel. Practice real life conversations in the Babbel app. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Get personalized help in Babbel's live online classes. Classes are limited to six people, so everyone can get the help they need. Review words and phrases with fun games, or dive into the culture with short videos. Whatever your learning style, Babbel gives you the tools you need. Babbel. More ways to learn. Start learning a new language today at Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Wake up to Wendy's and get a bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. Made with fresh cracked eggs and served on a hot buttery croissant that's fluffy enough to sleep on. Uh-uh. It's time to wakey wakey. Hit the Wendy's drive through and get your bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. That's a better breakfast for just $1.99. Only at Wendy's. We got you. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Third-party delivery prices may vary. Not valid in the combo. Back here at Venice Memorial Stadium. It's a handoff here on third down. Some room up the left sideline. William Knight, he's going to break free. He is going to score. 43 yards to the house. Collinsville, not a single man on the left side of the field. And Knight's going to take that one every time. Garden City, they take a 13-0 lead. Yeah, and uh, just missing the tackle there. Uh, that time was uh, Reese Foyer, and you expect him to to make those and just couldn't quite close out on the corner. So two drives, two scores here for the Bronkbusters as they're on to attempt the PAT. <laughs> on to attempt said PAT, that'll be William Gregg. Frank, who certainly likes to take his time setting these up. His PATs have taken a little bit longer than what we're used to. Kick is away. And that one is going to be blocked. The kick is blocked. That ball is going to be bounced all the way. It's going to be picked up. It's like Bobby Will might have a chance to be right here. Taking it all the way back to Cole Frazier. Can he make it? Yes, he can. So you get something at least. You get a couple of points. It should be a couple of points. It's not going to be six, as we just put up on the scoreboard. That is not how that works. But it should be, I believe. It should be two. It should be two. So Cottonville, they definitely won't like giving up the touchdown. But at least you get a couple points. And it'll be a 13 2 ball game. 440 left on the clock. Cottonville trailing by 11. They'll still kick off here in just a moment. They'll still receive the kick in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KSN. Helping you move forward. That's what Cottonville Community College does. Whether you want to increase your ability to advance at work, learning to earn a two-year, or just want to expand your horizons, Coffeyville Community College can help. And CCC is flexible, offering a traditional college setting. Fast eight-week classes or even online classes. CCC can meet your needs your way. Call CCC at 620-251-7700 or visit them online at coffeyville.edu. We are Coffeyville Community College. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, 440 on the clock, 13 to 2 our score. Coffeyville blocks the PAT, takes it all the way back to scores at Juan Frazier on the return. And so, instead of maybe trailing by 14, you only trail by 11. Seems like a whole lot. We'll see if that really makes an impact here into the game. Getting the win once again. That one's gonna float into the air for what seems like an eternity. Fair catch can be called. That ball will be caught. Nick Moreno. Excuse me, that'll be Doug Bates with the fair catch about the 33 yard line so Coffeyville forced the punt on their first drive but maybe a little bit of forward momentum after the big play on the PAT we'll see if that really changes things here and they come out a little bit stronger yeah you hope it does you hope it gives them some some type of uh, some type of uh, momentum here or lights a fire under them and uh, you know that you just show how tough that wind is though that wind is blowing pretty i didn't realize it was blowing that strong but uh, that ball just died in the air that flag fully erect just beyond the scoreboard here at veterans memorial stadium 
Well, I, that's the right word. You can look at me all you want, but it is going to be Thompson shotgun formation with Star Thomas in the backfield. Trips to the right. Thompson takes a snap. A long handoff here. Held that one for what seemed like eternity and gave maybe the Broncos a chance to come up and make the tackle. There you go. That's proof right there, Matt, as the door slams behind us. Be a couple yards here on second down, but a flag on the play. We got to get a door stopper. That is going to be a good investment someday. So a flag on the play. We'll see where it falls. Would have been a gain of two. But it looks like we're going to back Coffeyville up here. It'll be a 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. And I'll send him back about eight. They'll bring up second down and 18. Excuse me, holding means we'll repeat first down. So first down and 18, ball on. The 24-yard line now. Thompson shotgun formation, three wide receivers, two to the right. Thompson looking to pass, going over to his right, trying to find the out route, but the ball's knocked out of the hands of the intended receiver on that one. That would have been Bryce Childress, the intended receiver. And second down, 18 upcoming. Garden City looking like the team that came to play tonight. Bobbyville outside of the blocked uh, PAT is looking really sluggish. So 4.16 left to go in quarter number one. And yeah, like you said, it's been a little bit of a sluggish start here. Aside from the block PAT in return, it just feels like one team has shown up to play, at least here in the first 11 minutes or so. Still plenty of football, though. We'll see if Knoxville can do something here on the second down and long. Thompson under center. It's a handoff. Star Thomas jumps over the pile, forming right in front of him, but he's only able to get it maybe a yard. That'll bring him third down at 17. That'll give him actually a little bit more here, make that three. Maybe gave him a little bit of four momentum on the fall. Make that third and 14. Still third and long, and... Uh... Tough decision here offensively. What do you want to do? You want to try to take a shot and pick this up, or are you going to just try to gain a few yards and punt it away? Only one completion tonight for Coffeyville in about six or seven tries. Shotgun formation. Thompson once again looking towards the air. Taking some time. That ball's going to be underthrown. Almost in the area of the defensive back. That was Chris Smith. That'll bring up fourth and 16. Caulfield forced to punt away once again after the incompletion. Thompson took an absolute shot on that throw. And I think that's what caused the pass to go a little awry there. But uh, right now, Caulfield's offense or defense have not shown up in this game. Uh, not looking very good early in this one for the, uh, the Red Ravens. It is truly what we talked about. You can't show up like you're playing at Fort Scott. Garden City may only be one game above 500, but they are still a team to be reckoned with. It's a low punt coming from the foot of Everly. Going to take an absolute hop. That ball's going to head out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And that was an absolute amazing bounce. Who's to say that Everly wasn't there. talent there? The way you kick a ball sets up for the bounce. He angled it clearly, he ang he angled it clearly uh, towards the coughing corner, and that's where it went. And again, George Everly, an absolute weapon on special teams. Right now, if one one of the three uh, have shown up, it is special teams. Blocked extra point, and George Everly, you got to let the rest of the team show up you now. definitely got to give him credit there for the punt. Sometimes, the game of it's a little, there's a little bit of luck in there. There's a little well, bit of luck. Luck and, luck and talent can go hand in hand. I really could control the win. I'm not saying he can. It would be impressive. First down, 10 from the two. Safety. Martin City in a little bit of trouble. That's safety. 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 He didn't get out. That's a safety. He did not get out of the end zone. He did not get out of the end zone. The rarest point total in football. As Coffeyville puts up a second two points on the board. They will cut the guard to lead to nine. How's about that one? 13 to four. Our score with 316, William Knight just nowhere to go. He was tackled by a bevy of Red Ravens. So we'll take a break here. One minute break, 316 left to go in quarter number one. 13 to 4 our score. Off the trail by nine. You're Red Ravens football. US 98.1, 2%. Financing for all, that's the Romans way at Roman Chevrolet View again independent. If you're worried you won't qualify for financing, see the fine folks at Romans and they will get you in a vehicle ASAP. They finance anyone 100%. Don't let your credit issues stand in the way of you driving a great, reliable vehicle. Come to Roman Chevrolet Buick at 2313 West Main in Independence, Kansas. Check out the selections online at romansgm.com. 
Coffeyville Regional Medical Center, we take seriously our responsibility of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and healthcare you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Coffeyville, 13 to 4. Our score after Coffeyville picks up a safety. William Knight nowhere to go in the back of the Garden City end zone. Has to take, well, I won't say the sack because it wasn't a sack. Has to take the loss. How about that? And that'll give us our nine-point lead. Garden City now going to have to punt the football away. Coffeyville, well, they're looking like they might get some good field position here. As they're going to be punting into the wind. This ball, yeah, this, look for this ball to just maybe maybe get to the 50. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle here for Garden City. So they'll punt it away. That ball going to be sent towards the moon. Floating high up in the air, fair catch can be called, but they're going to drop it! They dropped the football, they did the same thing last week. Who recovered it? I knew that was going to be difficult, because you're going to send that to the moon, and the wind is going to make it wobble. That was going to be a hard one to catch for a guy that doesn't normally field punts. Garden City's indicating they have it, and they do. So for the second straight week, Coffeyville will muff a punt. And the issues just continue here for Coffeyville. This is what happens. You got a guy back there that doesn't normally field punts, uh, that uh, has to catch a ball that is probably knuckling because of the wind. And uh, it was, I believe that was Doug Bates, who is the backup fullback. So, I mean, that's a guy that's just not used to catching it. And uh, unfortunate there for, for Coffeyville. So Garden City will take over in Coffeyville territory. First down and 10 on the 44-yard line. And 13 to 4 our score. The Ravens trail by 9. 314 left to go in quarter number one. Here's a handoff first down. William Knight on the carry. Excuse me, no, that'll actually be Talbert. He'll find a little. He crosses the line of scrimmage. Not much more. Looks like they'll give him two. Bring up second down and eight. Defense got to step up here again. Force the safety. Try to get the ball back. And, and yeah. Special teams, they make their first mistake of the game. Second down and eight upcoming. Ball on the 42-yard line. And shot confirmation with Talbert in the backfield. Two wide receivers right, one to the left. Going to send one of those men in motion over towards the left now. It's a handoff to Talbert. Talbert going to try to cut up field, but again, he's going to be taken down at the line. Good tackle there. Alan Henry on the defensive line. Going to set up about third down and seven. Game of one. Red Ravens starting to get pressure on the run game. Uh, that run game early in the first was picking, you know, four or five yards up just about every run and now has been held short uh, on the last three when you, when you factor in the safety. Garden City, they have been fairly efficient on third down today. We'll see if Coffield can get the stop this time around. Third down and seven. Trips to the left, one to the right. Coffield going to shift one of those linebacks to the right. Nice throw, looking to pass, going to be pressure, going to be stacked. Coffeyville's defensive line, they're gaining a little bit of momentum here. Three very big plays in a row. And that's going to bring up fourth down at about the, about the 49-yard line. It looks like it may have an injured Brockbuster on the play. And slow to get up. That's one of the offensive linemen. Ryan Cooley. Ryan Cooley. But he will be able to get up. He's got a slight limp. But he'll be able to go off the field under his own power. But that will bring up fourth down at 14. Now a timeout taken here by Coffeyville, it seems. Interesting second time out taken by the Red Ravens in this first quarter. Right, keep it right here though. Interesting though for Coffeyville is they're actually becoming right out onto the field. So they'll take the timeout, but now this will be more of a time stopper timeout. Just not going to have a conference. I guess they just want to. Uh, they want to stop the clock at least. They don't want to have to go into the Wait, wind no, here, I, I would assume. I'm about 20 minutes ahead of time here. Yes. Why did I think it was just before halftime? I don't know. I am living on a completely different dimension it's right now. It's been a pretty long first quarter, though. But it is going to be a timeout, so it will be 1.54 on the clock. Coffield with one timeout remaining. I have no idea where I'm at right now. Don't don't muff the punt here. I'm going to be yeah, nervous to, taking punts. Okay, that's close attention. Punt is away. It's going to be rather low, but it's going to float. Coffield's just going to clear away from the football. It takes a horrible Garden City bounce. That'll give Coffield about 15 yards there, so that's about as good of a 15-yard return as you can get without having to do anything. That took a wicked back hop. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a punt 
take a back off like that. That was uh, really fortunate for Cogville offense. So the safety looks to have fired up the Cogville defense. Now if we can just figure out something to fire up the Cogville offense. Cogville will take over. First down and 10. Ball on the 38-yard line of the Red Ravens. A minute 44 here in, I know now, quarter number one. Quarter one. Look to uh, look look for a, for a shot play here. Take a big shot down the field. Pistol formation. Cutler and Thomas in the backfield. Hand off to Thomas. Trying to find the hole, and he's going to fumble the football. That ball will be recovered by the Broncosters and mark up another mistake here for the offense. Pyle is pushing forward. Caulfield tries to strip the football back, and they're just going to give the football right back on over to Garden City. Uh, this offense is uh, just looks lost right now. They're struggling. Rare star Thomas mistake. He's been one of the consistent guys this season, and uh, that's what Garden wants to do. They want to force you into making uh, making errors. And Coach Lager talked about trying not to make them. And, you know, the fumble is just you, you just gave them right great field position after you forced it to force them to a three and out after you fumbled the the the. Uh, Safety punt, and then you know, you get great field position on a great back off, and now you give the ball right back inside the 30 yard line. I hate to say it, Matt, but you can't win on two pointers alone. No, you cannot. Not in um, this is not basketball. Not in basketball, and probably not in football either. I would say you can win in basketball, but that's an argument for another time. First down, Reisdorf takes a snap and hand it off over towards the left. That's going to be Devin Hodges. He'll have himself quite a bit of room. As everybody picks up their blocker there, that'll be about a gain of 10. First down and 10, now into the red zone territory. 11-yard gain there. And, uh, life has been breathed back into this Garden City offense. Shot confirmation now, four wide receivers set. Reisdorf hands it off again. Hodge is going to just break through the line. He is gone. Touchdown, Broncosters. Coffeyville cannot catch a break, not on offense, not on defense, not on special teams. It's about... The worst we've seen uh, Garden Coffee will start off to a game this season. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they this is similar to what they looked like last week, but Fort Scott just not the opponent that Garden City is, and uh, they're making you pay. I mean, it's it's 19-4 right now. But you're playing like you're facing off against the Greyhounds in Fort Scott. Unfortunately, this is not Fort Scott. This, this is Garden City. This, this is a ranked opponent. This is what we said last week. If you start out slow against a team like this, they're going to make you pay for it. So a minute six on the clock, on to attempt the PAT, make this a 16-point game. That will once again be William Greek. Greek's kick is away, and this time it'll be through the upright to no, actually no good. He caught a hold of that one, and he misses wide the left. So, the score stays off, 19 4 Stay on, it'll stay 15. 19 4 our score with a minute six. Garden City slashes up the middle for an 18-yard run. And that'll once again make this lead 15. We're going to take that, that keeps it a two-possession game, yes. though. That proves to be pretty big. Yeah. So we'll take a 60-second timeout. Come back in just a moment. Again, 19 for your score. You're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1 KSN. Panera believes in saying yes. Yes to clean, fresh ingredients. Yes to the new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread topped with rich mozzarella. Yes to delicious mac and cheese. Yes to putting it on a sandwich, creating the grilled mac and cheese sandwich. And yes to impromptu road trips to Sandwich, Illinois. Because that's living life to the flavor fullest. Get $1 delivery when you order on our app. Panera, live your yes. Pricing and product availability may vary. Visit PaneraBread.com. There's a lot of confusion about how to protect yourself from COVID with guidelines and regulations changing by the week. One thing is certain, you need an accurate thermometer for your family to check for fever, the leading sign of flu and COVID. Only the Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer has been proven accurate in more than 100 clinical studies. Don't rely on non-contact thermometers. They have little or no scientific study supporting them and can miss the fever that might mean COVID. Learn more at exergen.com. Back to Veteran Memorial Stadium here. A minute six remaining in quarter number one. Caulfield, they're going to have some work to do. Failing by 15, giving up their third touchdown, second touchdown on the ground today. This time for 18 yards up the middle. Kick is away. It's going to be a high floater. That ball's going to be fielded about the 18-yard line. On the return, that'll be Bryce Childress, it seems. He'll get himself a modest return of about 12 yards. Coffee will take over on the 30-yard line. So, I think this is a make-or-break moment for the Red Ravens. Uh, I think it certainly can be. Uh, that was the first normal kickoff we've seen all game. Uh, you know, the standard kick from the 35. 
I'm never going to return that time. But yeah, you got to, offense has got to do something. They have got to wake up and do something um, to put some points on the So Jordan Lewis into the game at halfback. Austin Cutler also in the backfield. Two wide receivers right, one to the left. Going to send a man in motion. That'll be Dorian Lewis sent out towards the left. Pass off to the flat. Lewis makes the catch. Pass the 30 to the 35. See where they say he stepped out. They're going to give him the 33, it seems. Wow, they'll back him up quite a bit. It'll be a gain of three, second down and seven. Just shy of the 33, it looks like. So a gain of three. Dorian Lewis again makes his first appearance in tonight's ball game. Really behind 15, if you're just now joining us, 19-4 our score. Coffeyville, their four points. A blocked PAT and return, and a safety. Honest point total in football, except for maybe one, which is possible. Yes, it is. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers right. Second down and seven, Thompson looking towards the air. Over towards the right, that ball is going to be stopped at the line. Garden City defensive line putting a paw on that one. That'll pull a fall incomplete, bring up third down and seven. Right now, both the battle of the trenches is being won by Garden City on both sides of the football. The running game has been really good for the offense, and they're getting pressure and stopping the run on the defense. So third down and seven now after the incompletion. Caulfield going to send trips out to the right. It'll be Batiste, it'll be Childress. It'll be Bellamy out to the right as well. Isaiah Taylor, he's off to the left. Lewis in the backfield, Thompson looking towards the air. Rolling out of the pocket, moving over towards his left. Going to tuck and try to do it himself. Trying to juke back to his right, but he's going to be stood up and taken down. It'll be a gain of about four, but that's not enough. It'll bring up fourth down and about three. Have to bring out the punt team one final time here in the first quarter and another chance for uh, Everly to switch field position again. Now we'll see if Everly can do it again here, put him on the two yard line. Of course, proved to be instrumental in picking up Caulfield a couple points. Just one play later, picking up the safety. And Everly gonna be punting from about the Caulfield 22 yard line. Garden City a little bit caught off guard there, trying to make a personnel change, punt is away. Gonna bounce about the 25 yard line, takes an absolute sky hop. This one's gonna be returned. Elon Kennedy on the return, has some blockers, but he's going to be hit and taken down to about the 18-yard line. So good coverage for Coffeyville. Despite the returnable punt, and at the end of the first quarter, we'll see a 15-point Garden City lead. So, after the first 15 minutes, Coffeyville again with some work to do, a two-possession ball game. Still plenty of time left to be had on the clock, but they are going to have to pick up the pace on offense. They trail the Garden City Brockbusters 19-4. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KSN. Customer service is the top priority at Gillum Liquors and Coffeeville. That's what sets them apart. Gillum's tries to add a little extra in the way of personal service. How? Well, they keep up on customer favorite wines and spirits. Check out the local favorites on display. And if you don't see your favorite, if it's available for sale in Kansas, Gillum will special order just for you. It's all about customer satisfaction at Gillum Liquors. For the largest wine selection, vast array of spirits, and the coldest beer in town, visit Gillum Liquors, 1713 West Ave in Coffeeville. Open seven days a week. Breathe easy. No problem with the Lennox Healthy Climate System from Lee's Cooling and Heating and Independence. Allergens, animal dander, dust, all of these can really affect your quality of breathing. But with the Lennox Healthy Climate System, you can stay in control of the air of your home. This system takes care of all air aspects, from humidity levels to indoor pollutants. Air is life. Enjoy perfect comfort with the Lennox Healthy Climate System, available at Lee's Cooling and Heating, 118 South Ace and Independence. Call 620-331-2310 or visit Lee's Cooling.com. Back here at Venice Memorial Stadium as we start the second quarter. We'll switch sides. Caulfield now going into the win. But Garden City with control of the football. Here's a handoff William Knight on first down. Moving off towards his right. He'll be taken down. It'll be a short gain of about two here on first down. But let's take a look at some stats from the first quarter here. I don't think we want to. I don't think we want to. 15 yards to the air and 26 yards total in that first quarter for the Ravens. Meanwhile, Garden City, 192 yards. That kind of paints the picture. It does. Second down and eight here. Got to worry about the Caulfield offense of defense here at the moment. 
Ken Reisdorf takes a snap, takes the handoff, rolling out to his left, looking for a man, has a man on the out route. That ball's going to be caught at about the 25. Making the catch, Martiel Singleton. That'll be enough for about a gain of five. Bring up second down and three. Big third down here for the Red Ravens defense. They can get a stop here, hold here, get the ball back. We're still early in this one. A lot can happen. Reisdorf yet to throw an incompletion here tonight. He's a perfect six for six after that last pass. Third down and three. Minute gone by here in quarter number two. Makes the handoff. No, gives it off to Knight. Knight pushing up the middle of the field. Looks like he's got it. Looks like he's spotted at the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of five. That'll be enough for a first down and ten. Bryce a very accurate passer on the season. He's uh, 66%. Got a 66% completion percentage, which is pretty good. So, new set of downs. First down and 10. Ball on the Garden City 30-yard line. Again, Garden City now moving into the wind or with the wind at their backs. Reisdorf again looking towards the air. Floats one up. Has a screen pass. That ball is going to be caught with plenty of room to go. He breaks through a buckle tackler. Possible runs into their own men and he is off to the races. Can Frazier catch him? Yes, he can. Taken down just shy of the end zone. As there's also a summary of today's game. You're running into your own man in the secondary. I don't know what's wrong with this Coffeyville defense right now. This is the the worst. They didn't look bad last week. They made a couple of mental mistakes jumping off sides, but did not look bad. They do not look good uh, early in this one. And unfortunately, I think Zaquan Frazier is injured. Zaquan Frazier down at around the end zone. So we're going to take an injury timeout as the trainers come out onto the field. We're going to take a, let's make it a two-minute timeout to start here, Nick. Two minutes, 13.30 left on the clock, 19.4 in Garden City. But they have a first down and goal when we come back. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1 KUSN. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. Want to learn a new language so it will actually stick? Try Babbel. Practice real-life conversations in the Babbel app. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Get personalized help in Babbel's live online classes. Classes are limited to six people, so everyone can get the help they need. Review words and phrases with fun games, or dive into the culture with short videos. Whatever your learning style, Babbel gives you the tools you need. Babbel. More ways to learn. Start learning a new language today at Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Wake up to Wendy's and get a bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. Made with fresh cracked eggs and served on a hot buttery croissant that's fluffy enough to sleep on. Uh-uh. It's time to wakey, wakey. Hit the Wendy's drive through and get your bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. That's a better breakfast for just $1.99. Only at Wendy's. We got you. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Third-party delivery prices may vary. Not following the combo. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet o -Lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet o -Lay steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet o -Lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Coming back from the break, first down and goal. A pile's going to form, but it looks like Garden City is going to be a little bit short of the end zone. Needed three. Looks like they're maybe going to get about two. And it'll bring up second down and goal. But back to the action here is Quan Frazier able to walk off the field. He was the injured Raven. Do see him down there on the sidelines. That'll be a big loss for Coffeyville if he is not able to return to tonight's ball game. Meanwhile, the game at hand bring up second down and one. Now again on the one. Garden City making the look to look this a three-score game. New quarterback into the game, by the way, for the Bronx Busters. Takes a snap, bounces out to the left. Nobody there, untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, Bronx Busters. Matthew Purnell comes into the game, two plays, and then drops into the end zone. And Coffeyville, their hole becomes just a little bit deeper now at 25-4. 
Yep, down uh, three touchdowns now. And the Garden City fans just going absolutely crazy over there as their team takes a big lead. So on to attempt the PAT again, William Gregg. I think they're going to go for two here. It does look like they're going to go for two. Lining up in pistol formation, trying to make this a 22-point game. If you are successful, three. 23-point game. Takes the handoff tonight, looking over towards the right. Floats the football, overthrown. It falls incomplete, so the two-point conversion will fail. So it'll stay a 21-point ball game. 12.49 remaining in quarter number two. It's Garden City 25, Caulfield 4. Come back in just a moment. One minute. You listen to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, KBS their savings from one side of the lot to the other at Roman Chevrolet Buick, your Silverado City. Romans has brand new Silverados in stock and priced to sell. They also have pre-owned Silverados with low miles and plenty of room. With over 37 trucks in stock, they have more trucks than anyone in Southeast Kansas. Must see, must have. Stop by and see for yourself when you visit Roman Chevrolet Buick 2313 West Main in Independence. Make your home more comforting with help from D Railed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, another touchdown for Garden City makes this a 21-point game. Caulfield trailing by 21 with 12.49 remaining in the first half. Caulfield 4, Garden City 25. Connor Harvey here with you alongside Matt Jordan, US 98.1 KUSN. Garden City on to kick it away once again. Fuller into the win. That ball is sent on a rocket out the back of the end zone. Again, the wind very, very strong here tonight, as it has been for most of the home games this season. I don't feel like we've had one where the wind wasn't a factor. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, windy just about every game we've had here at the Veteran Memorial Stadium. So Caulfield will take over first down and 10, ball on the 25-yard line. Caulfield just one first down tonight. Dare I say, Matt, now would be a good time for number two and number three and possibly number four. Uh, you'd think now is a good time just to score. I mean, you're down 21 points and have just that not looked good on really any many facets of the, of the football game tonight. Definitely half struggle, but there's always time to turn it around. Still the rest of this second quarter to go. That would be a good time to start. Thompson going to hand it off here. Wide receiver reverse. It's going to be Childress on the carry. There you go. That'll be a solid gain on first down. Looks like it'll be a pickup of 10. And there you go. There's number two. There's number two. Simple as that. They send Childress. Let him get some momentum. We know Childress, he's got quite a bit of speed out there. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you're going to want to, you got to do anything to, to wake the team up a bit. See if they can't get something going. Here's the announce. First down and 10. Ball on the 36-yard line. Dorian Lewis still in the game out of the tailback. Big Ferrante Cutler still the fullback. Two wide receivers to the right. Thompson under center, of course. Eye formation. Thompson going to pitch out to the right. Going to be Dorian Lewis on the carry. Big hole for him as he goes up the middle. Gets past the 40 and then something taken down finally at about the 43. Making a pickup of seven. Second down and three. Catch back big plays. That's what you want to see. Good chunk plays up to help your offense here and now uh, get a little drive going here. Get a touchdown. You don't necessarily need 20, 30, nope. 40 at a time. You just need to get five or six at a time. And if you can do that, it's in a good spot. And you can pick up the pieces on defense. There's still plenty of time to make a comeback in this one. Never, ever call game over by the second quarter. Nope. Unless you're calling eight man football Friday nights. Thompson back to pass here on second down. Off to the flat. Could be Cutler, but the ball is thrown behind him. He can do nothing but fall on it and make the catch as well. Maybe better serve to just knock that one down. That's the one that you just don't want to catch. But uh, That'll Cutler set him back a couple yards. could keep his balance and will make it uh, third and medium, third and six, as opposed to third and short. So third and six, ball on the 40. I like that, though. That's a callback to yesterday. Two weeks in a row I've gone home at halftime. But we play four quarters no matter what here. Yes. Just never, ever call a game done in the second quarter. Shotgun formation, third down and six. Thompson looking towards the air. Going to be in some trouble. Rolls out to his right, able to evade one rusher. Now has to do a few more. Actually, he can pass the original line of scrimmage. He's going to get it done with his feet. He's past midfield, stays on his feet. 
to hold on to that football. He takes quite the shot across midfield, but Thompson gets it done. What could have been a down by quarterback sack. Ends up being about a gain of a gain maybe about 10. Yeah, a couple of those offensive linemen didn't like the hit he took and came running in to back up their quarterback. And Thompson just showing his athleticism, his determination, and his strength there to uh, pick up the first down. That's the kind of effort you need here on the offensive side of the football. See if maybe that's the lights of fire. The Ravens after a little bit of pushing and shoving after the play. First down and 10. Ball now in Garden City territory at the 49-yard line. Thompson and shotgun trips to the left. Takes a snap again, looking towards the air. Going across the middle of the field, has a man, but threw it behind him. Still got to be caught. I mean, that hits Matisse right in the hands there, and uh, you, you got to catch that. It, it was thrown behind him, but you, you got to catch that. Long here, Matisse again, the intended receiver on the play, sets up second down and 10. That ball, I think if you catch that one, maybe it becomes a little bit difficult considering where the football was, but there was only really about one or two men to beat. Yeah, I mean, had that yet he led him, that might be a touchdown, but he threw it behind him, and you still got to come away with the, the catch there because that's a nice big play and a first down. Still about 15, 20 yards on a potential catch there. So second down and 10. One wide receiver each side with Cutler and with, I believe that is still Dorian Lewis into the game. At the halfback position, pitch out to the left. Garden City sent the blitz, and looks like that football may have been coughed up again. I think he was down. I don't I don't think we'll it came see. out after he was yeah, down. Yeah, will indicate Cough will, will keep possession of the football. But again, Garden City sending the blitz on the right side, ran right into the play. Cough was trying to run there. They'll lose three here on second down. Third yeah. down to 13. Yeah, he uh, looked like he maybe tripped over his own offensive lineman who got pushed back a little bit on the pitch play. But trying to take advantage of uh, Lewis's speed and get him outside, get him into some space. Third down and 13 once again. Under 10 minutes to go here in this first half. Off the lineup, three wide receivers. Garden City showing blitz, coming off the left edge. Thompson going to the air. Having to roll out of the pocket, going over towards his right. Throwing it towards the sideline, just going to float one. Thompson one of them, roughing the passer on the play. Trying to explain his case to the referee, but not going to get it here. That'll set up fourth down and 13. It looks like Cockle may have to punt into the wind. Or will have to punt to the win. No, look, May here. Looked uh, good momentarily and then stalled out. Unfortunately for Kyle Ville, they still yet to really get anything going off his foot. That one more about a missed opportunity, of course, had that man over the middle. We don't ask what ifs, but a pretty big one there on that drive. So fourth down and 13, and Everly is on to punt the football away once again. In the first quarter, three punts, an average of 62.7 yards. There you go, Matt. Average might be shortened up here, though, as they punt into the wind. Fair catch going to be called, and that ball going to be fielded. Elon Kennedy makes the catch at about the 24-yard line. So the Broncosters take over once again, and again, it's maybe a make-or-make drive for the Cockville defense, as you can't give up another one. Really, you can't. You get down by four scores in this one, and things are going to get dicey with as good as this uh, this Broncosters defense is. Uh, somebody's going to make a stop and step up and force a turnover and the defense may have to say we got to do it themselves and try to see if they can't uh, score. Score at least pick up a turnover to give the Cockle offense another chance here. Shot confirmation, taking the snap, handing it off, no, taking the handoff, pass is complete, that'll be a gain of 11 on first down. Making the catch, Sino Jarman. He already has one big catch today. He was open, makes, not, makes it a nice easy pitch and catch there between him and the quarterback. And, too, too soft coverage right there. First down and 10, ball on the 36. And now it will be Garden City who goes to the pistol formation. Reisdorf going to hand it off. It'll be Knight on the carry. Moves over towards his right, dives forward, gets two here on first down. Here comes second down and eight. Actually give him three, it seems. So second down and seven. How about that? Again, with under nine minutes left to go in this first half. You'd like something heading into the locker rooms. You do get the ball to start the second half, so if you can find a way to get a stop, get a score before halftime, and turn the score coming out of halftime, it makes this game a lot different. Back to shotgun, three wide receiver set. Rice Dwarf takes the handoff tonight over the middle. Man, wide open. Garden City will miss an opportunity of their own. That man got behind every single member of the Ravens secondary, but could not hang on to the ball. I think Fish jumped up there and got a hand on it knocked it away he uh it looked like it was wobbling as it was uh, 
coming over across the middle. I think Fish jumped up there and got a got a little hand on it to try to, to change the direction of the pass, but it looked for a second there that, that was going to be dangerous. Very important hand on that one. It's in the receiver. It was the tight end favor Okafe. Third down and seven upcoming here for Garden City. Four wide receivers set. Nice door. Looking towards the air once again. Over towards his left. Floats one up. Bit overthrown that one definitely caught by the wind. And receiver on that play that would be Martev Martez Jones. And that'll bring up fourth down. It looks like we'll maybe see Garden City set up to punt. They'll be punting with the wind at their backs, of course. Jones listed as the long snapper. Not too often you see the long snapper go out for a uh, catch. Long snapper, of course, you see he's even on the field to snap this one away. So that's not necessarily wrong. Sometimes you know you list him as the primary position. Could be a running back. Back came pull from back, the, running back, the pull fullback back. slot there as well. So fourth down and seven on to put it away once again is Garden City. That one almost blocked, but it will get away. That one get bounced at about the 23, and now it's going to take a wonderful Garden City hop. Slows down, and it's going to be once again Garden City pins Conkill back deep. They'll take over first down and ten from their own three. Yeah, I thought that was going to go just into the end zone, but it died at the three-yard line. And that's going to give this struggling Red Raven offense a uh, big field in front of them to try to add points. Big field, starting at the three. I've already seen one safety tonight. Coffee will try to avoid one of their own. So it looks like it'll be Thompson once again. Torrance Farmer going to get his first minutes in this one. He's into the ball game, has the tailback, two wide receivers set, one to the left, one to the right. Bronte Cutler in as fullback. Thompson taking the snap on the one yard line, looking over towards his left, going to float one down the sideline, one on one. Does Taylor have it? Yes, he does. Following to the ground, it's going to be about a 24 yard gain here on first down. Cockles, biggest play of the game. That'll give you some breathing room from the shadow of your own goal line. Good job by Taylor to adjust back to the football and uh, make a nice little catch there. Yeah, fought through one-on-one -on -one coverage there on that one, kind of adjusted to the ball, which was, of course, dying in the wind. That's kind of the story of the game. Those balls, you're going to have to make adjustments. You can't really assume the football's going to be where you think it is. First down and 10, pistol formation, takes the snap, takes the handoff to Farmer in some trouble, trying to find Cutler in the flat, has to get rid of it quickly. Cutler being in the area has an eligible receiver that will not be intentional grounding. But it'll just bring up second down and ten instead. Yep, just had to get a red, uh, red of it. I think they were trying to take a shot down the field again, and uh, unfortunately just too much pressure there for Thompson to do anything with it. Yeah, Cutler, an eligible receiver on the play, but did not look like he was looking for a pass no. on that one. It looked like he was pretty much looking for a, uh, well, running a route. But yeah, maybe just, just looking a for decoy a route, yeah. Yes. Uh, but it's a good thing he was running a route. Yes, absolutely. Second down and ten. And set in motion over towards the right. That'll be Cortarius Wilson. So two wide receivers right. Thompson takes a snap, rolling out to his right, looking for a man on the out route. That'll be Bellamy making the catch. Takes off one tackler, but takes down or gets taken down by the other. This will be a gain of about seven. Second, third down and three. Third down and short here for Coffeeville. Nice little game. Sets up third and short. That's exactly what you want to see if your Coffeyville offense continue to try to get some momentum going here. But this is a big, big third down, critical third down. You got to pick this up here. Yeah, looking for that second first down of the drive. Clock just over seven minutes remaining here in the first half. Two wide receivers left and one to the right. And Torrance Farmer still in the game. He's your tailback. Thompson takes a snap, looking over to the right as Farmer passes caught. Burgles the man. Pushed out of bounds at about the 40-yard line, but that'll be enough for a first down. Torrance Farmer with the big effort. He's uh, the big man. Uh, generally, is going to run over someone, is Farmer. But that time, he showed off his athleticism and leaped right over him. They're going to say he's short. That's a horrible spot. Oh, that's horrible. Now they're going to give him the first. Good job. I was going to say. That's that was just taking down at like the 40. Yeah, down, that was a give horrible him. spot. It's still a bad spot if they give him the 40. But at least it's the first down. But at I'll least see. it's the first down. First down and 10. I was about to be about to call injustice. About to call the Jayhawk hotline. First down and 10. Thompson looking towards the air. He tries to tuck it. He'll take the sack. Start here on this first down and 10. There's nowhere to go that time under pressure. They've done a good job of bringing the pressure tonight has uh, Garden City. So now will send them back three yards. Second down and 13. 
Thomas across the halfway point of this second quarter. 6.30 on the clock. Thompson again lines up shot confirmation. Going to send two out to the left, tight end over to the left. One wide receiver on the weak side. Ball on the right hash. Thompson hands it off here. Farmer on second down, trying to find some room up the left sideline. Gets past the 40, back to the original line of scrimmage. So third down and long, third down and 10. Another third and long opportunity here. Got a, another critical third down. I'm pre pretty much all of them at this point are. As uh, you got to just get something going here. So you can get some points on the board offensively. Just looking for anything. You will receive the football, but you got to make sure that you he pick up some points before the half. Yeah, I mean, if you can score right before half and then score coming out of half, you make it a one possession game. You got to be feeling pretty good, but you got to get the uh, score before half first. So again, third down and ten. I formation with two wide out to the right. Takes the handoff. Thompson looking towards the air. Has some time in the pocket. Going to throw it deep. Trying to find Wilson. That ball hangs, and that ball is incomplete. Almost picked off. Thompson almost punished for the deep ball as he threw that one in the double coverage. And they'll just bring up fourth down and ten. Uh, that's intercepted. That's not the end of the world. That just is a big punt on third down. And actually may be better than what Everly can do into the wind. So, uh, we, we, you know, we'll see here. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately that ball just died right in the wind. This is not the game for deep balls for sure. So fourth down and ten and on to punt. Once again, it will be George Everly. Again, after the first quarter, had an average of 62. The last one, a little bit shorter than that. Honestly, no fault at Everly. Just the way the wind blows tonight's ball game. Everly going to take the snap here. Kick is away. Garden City sending no rush. That ball actually forcing Garden City to back it up. Fair catch. Around the 15. And yeah, that was an excellent punt by Everly into the wind, actually forcing Garden City to back it up. And almost, almost that fair catch was dropped. Yeah, he, Teddy, he had to work for that one. It shows uh, how strong Everly's leg is as he just about forced a mistake by this return team. And this is, uh, I think, what, that was his fourth punt of the game, fifth punt of the game. All but one of them have been inside the 20-yard line. So once again, the Bronkbusters start inside the 20, like you said. It'll be first down and 10, ball on the Bronkbusters 17. Eisdorf in at quarterback, takes a snap, looking towards the air. Going over to the right, has Talbert, catch is made, and it's going to be a first down for the Bronkbusters, gets about 10. Nope, nope, looks like they'll maybe spot it short, give them about 9, second down and 1, how about that? Went out of bounds, just about a yard short. Number 5 to play here, you definitely don't want to see Garden score one more time before we go into halftime. Definitely do not want to make it a 4-score game before the break. Didn't really want to make it a three-score game before the break, but you I definitely don't want four. I kind of feel bad for our uh, CCC student who has to talk to Coach Liker at uh, halftime. Yeah, absolutely. Probably Look not gonna... to that. We're going to get the feel <laughs> of the sideline, yeah. and it's definitely not going to be as jovial as we've had in weeks past. Reisdorf again looking towards the air. Out route. Catch is made. Knockville trying to make the tackle. Kicks off one tackle. Now going to be taken all the way back. Four of momentum eventually going to be called. We'll see where they spot that one. It will be enough for the first down. They'll give him three. Uh, Trying to kind of push him down there at first. Almost ended up paying for it. I thought they were going to, yeah. Like they were able they to at least collapse on the football. Tried to strip the football. Montiel Singleton on the catch. So again, a first down and 10 ball on the 30-yard line. Trips to the left. And Talbert in the backfield. Nice door takes a snap. Takes the throw to Talbert. Catch is made. Has the helmet removed, that's going to be a face mask, but it might not even matter. Play will be whistled dead as he did lose his helmet. But we'll have a face mask here. As the catch was made, Sean Buckley on the catch. And then again, just had his helmet ripped off. You don't want a player running down the field without a helmet. How often is a face mask uh, considered touchdown saving? Because that's exactly what that was. Definitely not, not a good idea to get the penalty in the first place, but you know, it's a happy little accident. Worked out. As Buckley was pretty much gone. Only one man really in the zone to catch him there. As it looks like, it may have been Conkill just once again beat on that slant right across the middle. That has really been their kryptonite here tonight. 
So it'll be a personal foul face mask. It'll be 15 yards from the dead ball spot, which was informed to be about the 44-yard line. So we'll go all the way down to the Coffeyville 41. So we're in the Coffeyville territory here. 420 remaining here in the second quarter. Again, better than the alternative. Now we'll see if Coffeyville can make good on the alternative. As again, it will be two wide receivers left. One to the right. You've got a wing back off to the left as well. Nystor fakes the handoff, fakes the throw. Now goes over to the right sideline. Catches again made. Luckily, really making short work of the Coffeyville secondary tonight. He's got himself another one, another huge chunk of yards. Reisdorf and this, uh, these wide receivers just carving up the uh, Red Raven, a very good Red Raven defense that just does not look it tonight. And is looking for one-on-one -on -one coverage, and more often than not, Garden City ending up on top. Here's a handoff to Talbert. Bounces off a couple tacklers, but it's taken down by the third. It's a couple yards here on first down, second down and eight. Godville have usually been able to pull off one-on-one -on -one coverage, but tonight it just has not been there. No, it has not. Frazier has been beat several times. Collins has been beat several times. Goley's been beat a couple times as well. Basically, if Garden City wants it, they've had it when it comes to going through the air. Even the incompletions have been to open receivers. Second down and eight. Shot confirmation. Here's a handoff to Talbert. Has a few lead blockers as he tries to move towards the right sideline. Breaks a tackle, and he finds his way into the end zone. Coffeyville cannot buy a tackle tonight. Rockbuster in the score. Another touchdown. And there you go. That'll make it a four-score game with 308 remaining. In I, I don't know where the Coffeyville the team that we've seen all season is, because right now uh, they just did not show They're up being this stood game. up. They're, They're just, being stood up. This is not good. You cannot make a tackle standing up. As we just learned there, especially with a runner like Talbert catching it from the flats or taking the pitch out to the right, just basically just runs into you. You stand up, you fall backwards on the tackle, he just trots into the end zone untouched. 31-4 in favor of Garden City. I don't know what he's being. Well, they didn't did touch him, but after the broken tackle, the first one, nobody in the area to really make a play on the football. I don't know what you need to say at the halftime, Matt, but it's got to be something because this is obviously the worst we've seen Caulfield play all season long. PAT is up and away, and it is going to be plenty good. So with 3.08 remaining in quarter number two, it's a 28-point ball game. Coffeyville, number 16 in all the land. They need to dig down deep, deep, deep. Take a minute break. You're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, KUSN. You date like you aren't 22 anymore. Like emotionally mature is kind of hot to you now. And six texts sent back-to-back -back is totally cool. You date like your experiences, relationships, they haven't just made you you, they've made you interesting. Young love was great, but dating as a fully formed, emotionally mature human, man, that's on a whole other level. Download the Match app today. Zimbabwe. <clears throat> the broken Bunsen burner burns so bright. South, Jamie. Southeast Asian Peninsula. Hey, hey, Jamie. Yes. I think the only line we need from you today is drivers who switch to progressive could say big. Cool. I just got to finish my warm ups. <clears throat> foul, foul. Throw in the towel. History, history. Switch to progressive today. Santa ski slalom in a salmon skin suit. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Back here at Ben's Memorial Stadium in Coffeyville. 308 remaining in the first half. And another rushing touchdown. This time for that'll be Dedrick Talbert. Puts the Bronkbusters up 28, 32 to 4 over Coffeyville. His kickoff gonna be returned one yard deep into their own end zone. Coffeyville gonna break a few tackles, but he'll eventually be stood up here at about the 18 yard line. Rushing, so will take over. rushing touchdowns are their favorite way to score on this season. Just five passing touchdowns, 15 rushing touchdowns. Have only given up six total touchdowns uh, on the year to opponents. So uh, down by four touchdowns. Uh, that does not bode well for this Red Raven team. William Knight with a touchdown run. Devin Hodges with an 18-yard touchdown run late in the first. And now Dedrick Talbert with a rushing touchdown. So three running backs on the Garden City roster. They all have a rushing touchdown against you. Here tonight, Garden City, they have had the game plan. They have had Popiel's number basically since opening kickoff. 
Caulfield's offense going to get another try here. Thompson trying to hand it off here to Childress. No, pulls it away. Good choice there. Thompson dives up the middle for about four yards on the play. Second down and six. Quarterback Reed there had an option to give it to Childress, but Childress immediately taken down. Took a hit right as Thompson pulled the football away. Oh, outside of a couple of air throws, Thompson's been the best-looking player on this team so far uh, outside of uh, the punter. Uh, but, you know, Thompson has looked strong running the football, has made some pretty good throws down the field, and uh, just has been under a lot of pressure. Football now on the 25-yard line. Thompson looking towards the air. Chase from behind, gets the throw off, but it'll fall incomplete. Intended receiver, that was Kale Harbor. He's hit from behind. Bring up third down and five. Again, under pressure, just had to step up, tried to make a throw, and... Couldn't come away with it there. Third down and five now. Scofield once again comes up to the line with trips to the right. Thompson takes a snap. High snap, has to catch it in midair. Takes the throw over to Taylor. That ball's complete. Snap came in like a rocket. And now on the flag after the play. Well after the play. Let's see what that one may be. That's on Coffeyville. But that's that's look, you you can't. <laughs> it looks see like where it, it's called on. It looks like it may be on Coffeyville. That was after the play. Would have been a first down as Taylor made the catch. It looks like it is on Coffeyville. The unsportsmanlike conduct here charged against Daniel Trispuck. I don't know what you're thinking. You're not. When you're struggling to move you're the football like this, getting frustrated. the last thing you want is to back yourselves up even more. So it will be first down. You do convert on third down, but now you're facing a first down and 25, and you're, well, back deeper than when you started the drive. There's no reason for any of that, especially if you can't move the football. It's one thing if you're moving the football and you're playing well offensively, but... And it shouldn't be first and 25. It should just be first and 10. First and 10, yeah, there From you go. the 16. I was going with the Chang gang there. They seemed to know what they were doing, but now they've reset. First down and 10, ball on the 16. Thompson and Kett. High snap, but again, he pulls it down. In the pocket, chased out of the pocket, trying to tuck it himself, but he'll be taken down behind the line. It'll be a quarterback sack once again. This is looking bad really quickly. So Caulfield goes from a first down and 10 at the 30. Now they're all the way back to their 14, 13 yard line. Another loss of three. A minute 34 left on the clock here. Caulfield got to imagine pinned back deep in their own territory. Don't want to give the Broncos the football back one more time the way the game's kind of gone tonight. No, and you're into the win, so you know the punt, uh, won't, I mean, it'll still be good, but it won't be that good. Three wide receiver sets. Thompson again looks towards the air, falls back, throws over to the right, passes complete to Tup Farmer. Farmer bouncing out to his right, gets to the 15, taken out of bounds. It'll be a short gain of about two. Looks like it'll be third down and a long 10. Taken down out of bounds. So the clock will stop here with a minute eight remaining here in this first half. He's going to get together over something that happened down on the field. Not quite sure what did go on there. Farmer made the catch. was tackled out of bounds. Helmet might have come off. No indication of a timeout. Both teams will go off to the sideline here. And now we'll have a flag thrown. But for what? That's the latest I've ever seen a flag thrown in my in my entire broadcasting and, and sports fan That's career. Solid 90 seconds after the play. For what will it be? The <laughs> late hit called against Garden City. That's obviously what the conversation. Was I about. wonder. Oh, there is an injured Red Raven oh, player nice. on the field as well. I just now noticed that one as well. But the penalty will be for the late hit. Maybe trying to get a number here on the Raven. 
it might be Farmer. Nope, it's not Farmer. You see him down there on yeah, the field. Yeah, We'll get you an update on that. Tell you what, let's go ahead and take a 60 second timeout. We'll come back. Uh, no, I think we're good. I think we're good. There, yeah, they're coming back out. I think I got The injured Raven is on the sideline, or is not on the sideline. He is on the field. Oh, so we can't well, come back until. They're not huddled up, so there we go. Uh, it's Nathaniel Truspuck. He will be the injured Raven on the play. But it looks like he's all right. He'll be able to walk off with the assistance of the trainers there. It looks like he may be. Looks like he may be holding his arm. It's like he may have gotten himself an arm injury on that previous play. But it will be a late hit, which bucks Coffeyville back up to the 30. So we took a quick detour back within the Coffeyville 20, but we're really just right back to where maybe if Isaiah Taylor had got that pass uninterrupted. Rewind a couple plays. They gained a couple penalties. First down and 10. Run, running out of time, though. Yes. That little detour cost about a minute and a half. But a minute eight on the clock. First down and 10. Trips to the left. Thompson takes a snap. Over towards the right. Tripped by his own man. Shoved. His own man shoved it. That's what happened on that one. That, and now, now another a bunch of flags, flags all out. over the place. This may have been. I think this is against Garden. I think the man who made the sack said something to the Coffeeville bench, and the flags came out because of it. And I think maybe Thompson took a shot as well. Slow Thompson to get up. Slow to get up. He was taken down behind the legs. He's he's doing his best out there. And Will Bowen's about to come in. That's sports line conduct called here against Garden City. That'll be Darius Johnson. Defensive tackle. And it feels a little bit weird. He's the one who pushed the lineman into Thompson and came to the sideline and said something to the Coffeeville sideline. It feels a little weird. Usually we're on the opposite side of things. Why are you saying anything when you're up 28 you're yeah. obviously proving things on the football field the Coffeyville getting the beneficiary or being the beneficiary of a couple penalties here so 57 seconds left on the clock you still have one timeout Will Bone into the game and Will Bone you're right is into the ball game his first look here football on the Coffeyville 38 yard line trips to the left takes a snap looking over to his left and they go across the middle that ball is going to be pass interference pass interference Football fell incomplete. Actually, yeah. Uh, Isaiah hey, Taylor, did he catch that? Did he catch that? He's acting like he did, but we'll get an indication I still think there's going to be a pass interference penalty. Actually, that might have also been Johnson still in the game, by the way. Connor, was it Johnson Thompson, 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 Thompson still shoot. in the game? Yes. I saw Bone down there getting talked to by coach. I thought he was going to check in, but I guess Thompson was good to go. And it will be pass interference called here against Garden City. So three big penalties on this drive for the Broncbusters. There'll now be 51 seconds on the clock, and Cockfield has found their way into Garden City territory. So we've had a late hit on Sports of My Conduct, and now a big pass interference call. And that's really assisted the Ravens in just moving the football down the field. Now Garden City going to take a timeout here and talk things over. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. 51 seconds left in the half. Garden City leading this one 32-4 over Cockfield. You're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1 KUSN. Helping you move forward. That's what Coffeeville Community College does. Whether you want to increase your ability to advance at work, learning to earn a two-year, or just want to expand your horizons, Coffeeville Community College can help. And CCC is flexible, offering a traditional college setting. Fast eight-week classes or even online classes. CCC can meet your needs your way. Call CCC at 620-251-7700 or visit them online at coffeeville.com. EDU. We are Coffeeville Community College. Panera believes in saying yes. Yes to clean, fresh ingredients. Yes to the new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread topped with rich mozzarella. Yes to delicious mac and cheese. Yes to putting it on a sandwich, creating the grilled mac and cheese sandwich. And yes to impromptu road trips to Sandwich, Illinois. Because that's living life to the flavor fullest. Get $1 delivery when you order on our app. Panera. Live your yes. Pricing and product availability may vary. Visit PaneraBread.com. There's a lot of confusion about how to protect yourself from COVID with guidelines and regulations changing by the week. One thing is certain, you need an accurate thermometer for your family to check for fever, the leading sign of flu and COVID. Only the Incomplete pass here on first down. 45.9 seconds remaining here in this half. 32-4. 
Caulfield trailing by 28. This has not been a half to remember. Only a safety and a blocked PAT. Leading to points for the Caulfield Red Ravens tonight. Connor Harvin alongside Matt Jordan. Now a dead ball. Going to be called here before the snap. Now it looks like we'll be good to go. Backline referee charging in there like a bull. Thompson looking to pass. Looking over towards the right. Had a man, but the ball was thrown too far to the right. Trying to find the comebacker to Quartarius Wilson. But again, incomplete. Brings up third down to ten. Cogsville may not be undefeated and may not have a quarterback after this game. Because Thompson has taken some shots. We talked about it here. This Caulfield offensive line, they have been overmatched all game long. Just have not been able to build much of anything. Offensive and defensive lines in this game. I mean, Guard is controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. Of course, you talk about the skill players an awful lot. They're the players we mentioned on the radio, but really, the thing that makes offensive moves and defensive moves are the guys up front, and so far, Coffield has not won that battle. Thompson looking towards the air. Again, going to be flushed out of the pocket. Going to try to run, but he'll be taken down behind the line. There is a flag on the play. It looks like Coffield may have another injured player. Harden City doing some celebrating, but I'm not quite sure. They might be celebrating here after the flag. Looks like we've got ourselves another injured Raven this time, though. Now another flag comes out. It's going to be Terrence McLean. Now another flag. You're right. Terrence McLean is the injured Raven. I'll tell you what, these last three minutes have taken a majority of the game to play. But with all the stopping and the starting and the timeouts and the injured players and the penalties and the discussions about penalties, kind of just meandering our way into I think that this could be period. two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on Garden City, but I could be wrong. I'm not really sure. I didn't see the what first happened one was on thrown the first before, the, or yeah. before the play was over. So we'll see where that one comes in. The second one, well back, and that's almost certainly, usually, unsportsmanlike conduct. Unless it's the late hit we saw earlier on the drive. Okay. Okay. So, ultimately, it'll be holding on McLean, who is able to come off to the sideline. Doesn't need the assistance of the trainer. So good to see he is well and okay. But it will be unsportsmanlike conduct. The second of the drive, the fourth personal foul called against Garden City on this drive alone. This time it'll be Kevin Abrams for Wayne. That's eight, eight and nine now on the defensive line to get uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. So Coffeyville still has a chance of picking up some points here with the almighty yellow flag. That has been the primary factor in this drive. First down and 10, clock starts, now under 30 seconds. Thomas looking towards the air, looking towards his left. Now goes back to the right, going to throw it deep. Ball heads out of bounds, no flag. Coffeyville faithful, what one there? Thompson took a to get another shot. So the incomplete pass, intended receiver Isaiah Taylor. Looks like maybe that was Javier Batiste, excuse me, but he'll bring up second down and ten. Definitely a lot of bodies in the area, and now we're going to have a whistle. Down Garden City player. And it will be an injured Garden City Bronc Buster. Looks like the injured Bronc Buster, that will be Raymond Cutts. As the wind continues to wreak havoc here. Your water bottle that you failed to find in the trash can is now out into the hallway. It's taking a mind of its own. It's going to go on a little bit of adventure. We'll see where that one ends up. But the injured Bronx rush that will be Raymond Cuts. We'll take a... We'll see. Actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and keep it right here. As we update you on scores from around the Jayhawk Conference. Good time to check in there. We already had a couple games in the books. As earlier this morning, or earlier today, Hutchinson took down Dodge City. That game being played in Dodge City, 49-17. to And in our other non-conference game, it was Highland getting blown out by the number 10 team in the land, Iowa Central. They win that one 41-0. Do you have some other games tonight? Let's see if I can't find that one for you. Of course, we had one other game. And that is Fort Scott and Butler. Butler all over Fort Scott in that one. At the half, 45-3 in favor of the Grizzlies. 
a little bit. But 32 4 it is here. Offville trailing by 28. 23.3 seconds left to go in the half. And here's a high snap that gets over the head of Thompson. Thompson, he'll have to try to fall on it, but he doesn't. Now he gets a second chance. He overran it originally, but then jumped back on it. And that's going to put Coffill all the way back to their own 20-yard line. So what I said maybe about getting some points, well, that will negate that. As now you'll have 80 yards to go to pick up anything with 15 seconds on the clock. Yeah, and I think this might be... Uh... And this this time, I think Thompson is going to have to come out. He, he took a shot, and the helmet came off as he fell on that football. Whatever could go wrong here for Caulfield in this half has gone wrong. Yes, it has. They call it something about something's error. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law. Thank you. I didn't think you'd know that one. Yeah. I didn't. I'm not smart enough to know that one. Murphy's Law. I didn't know you were the brain tonight. Can't go wrong. It, it will. Usually, I'm the brain. You're the brawn. But not tonight. Big smart I, thought, I was going to say you're the brain and I'm the wit. I don't know. Tonight I'm the brain and the wit. We're just there. All right. But either way, the recovered fumble, hopefully Thompson's okay. As he does fall on the football, at least gives Caulfield possession of it. Will Bone will have to come into the game for the first time tonight. And now we'll have, I believe, a timeout taken. Another timeout as both teams head off to the sideline. I'm dead serious. This has been the longest three minutes I think we've ever played. Just a casual third and 38 here. And Coffeyville helped along the way by several Bronkbusters penalties, and then just one bad snap is all it takes to push him all been the way back. a few bad ones third. tonight. That was the first one that sailed over his yeah, head. Even on this drive, a couple snaps that Thompson had to knock down with his hands, kind of push it up, and then take it down. That one just a little bit too high for himself to handle. So again, Iowa Central defeats Highland tonight 41-0. Hutchinson defeats Dodge City 49-17. And of course, a game at the half. It is Butler defeating Fort Scott. That is homecoming for the Grizzlies tonight at the BG Veterans Sports Complex. Still can say that one from memory. I said it enough times. Yes, 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 yes. I remember I got to El Dorado. I said distinctly to Matt. I'm going to say this once, and then it's Butler the rest of the way out. And then it's El Dorado the rest of the way out. And then proceeded to say it every single time because they have the name right there at midfield. It's impossible to forget. That's just good marketing. It is. That's just great marketing. Make sure you put it so everyone sees it. It clearly worked. It clearly worked. I am living proof of that. So third down and 38 with 15 seconds left on the clock. Garden City has no timeouts remaining. Actually, they'll reset the clock to 5.4. Yeah, one play we'll here in halftime. Looks like Coffill just probably most likely just run the football and head into the locker rooms. But now we'll get another referee whistle and another timeout. This has been a long end of the first half. It's a long first half. It's an hour and a half. We have definitely had to kind of sit on them these last three minutes. I believe these last three minutes have now taken about 30 minutes of actual real time. For comparison, Matt, last time, last night, I was about 45 minutes from home on my way back from Howard. And it will be referee error here. They will not run the 10 seconds off, so we'll actually have 15.4 back on the clock. All right, so take the 10 off, add them back on, 15.4, third and 38. Football on the Caulfield 30-yard line, bone under center, eye formation, one wide receiver each side. It's a handoff. Up the middle goes Star Thomas. He'll be stood up about a yard in front of the original line of scrimmage. And that will be it for the first half of play. So Coffeyville, not a half to remember. Probably probably happy to see the half in. Absolutely so. We'll see what Coach Liker makes the adjustments he makes at halftime. And as it stands, Coffeyville going to have to dig down deep to save this undefeated season. They trail the Garden City Bronkbusters 32 to 4. So we'll head off to a Taking a four minute timeout here to start off with this second half. Actually, may not head away just yet. We've still got Garden City on the field. And now apparently Garden City has a third timeout, although the scoreboard says they have none. Apparently they're uh, So we're gonna have to stay here. And we're gonna have to bring Coffeeville back out. And the punt team. Oh, and they had headed to the locker room. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think they had any timeouts left either. Well, the scoreboard said they had no timeouts. Now I think the officials are trying to figure out, did they or did they not have timeouts? This is the first half that won't end. 
And nope, now, now it's not halftime because Garden City time. did not have a third timeout. So everybody apparently knew it besides Garden City and the referees themselves. We'll go ahead and take that four-minute break now. We'll come back here in just a moment. Garden City still not really heading off towards the locker rooms. I think they're still trying to argue their case. But we're going to take that four-minute break. Nick will tell you to come back if we have to. You're listening to Red Ravens football, US 98.1 KUSN. Taco Mayo's new Filet Ole Steak Bowl is piled high with Filet Mignon. It's Filet Mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender Filet Mignon. It's Filet Mignon. Filet Mignon. A uh, Filet Mignon. Filet Mignon. Filet Mignon. Savor the juicy Filet Ole Steak Bowl stacked with Filet Mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Let nothing stand between you and the tree stand with this fast, durable Kubota Sidekick. Featuring a gas-powered engine that delivers a top speed of 40 miles per hour. Best in class acceleration and handling with cargo and strength to haul what needs hauling. All backed by a two-year, thousand-hour warranty. Get ready for hunting season with the Kubota Sidekick. Visit your local Kubota dealer today. Go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Or go to Roman's Outdoor Power and see Jeff and Chance in Independence or Mike and Kevin in Bartlesville. Want to learn a new language so it will actually stick? Try Babbel. Practice real-life conversations in the Babbel app. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Get personalized help in Babbel's live online classes. Classes are limited to six people, so everyone can get the help they need. Review words and phrases with fun games, or dive into the culture with short videos. Whatever your learning style, Babbel gives you the tools you need. Babbel. More ways to learn. Start learning a new language today at Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Wake up to Wendy's and get a bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. Made with fresh cracked eggs and served on a hot buttery croissant that's fluffy enough to sleep on.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to direct your attention to the center of the field. For the 2021 NJC LA Division One Women's Basketball National Champions, and the top of the women's basketball team will be presented with the National Championship ring. The 2021 Red Raiders Women's Basketball Team ended the season with an overall record of 27 and 3. Winners are the 2021 Kansas Jayhawks Community College Conference East Championship. And on April 4, 2021, the Ravens would be in Cali College, 108 to 99, in the 2021 NJC Double A Division One Men's Basketball National Championship. We <laughs> visit the Ravens to help the community colleges and nearest national championship team will be CCC President Dr. Marlon Kornberg and Board of Trustees members Jimmy Littleberg and Janet Rowe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 NJC Double A Men's Basketball National Champion. Hey, 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 hey. We have four players on the NJC Double A Men's Basketball From Portland, Oregon, a sophomore and a 2021. AJCC to the honorable mention all conference quit, along with me, the 2021 national champion, currently playing at the University of Utah, number three, Boston Holt. <laughs> From Italy, Michigan, a freshman, and the 2021 national champion, currently playing at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, number 11, Marquis Browning. From Texas, Ontario, Canada, a sophomore in the 2021 National Champion, currently playing at Washburn University, number two, Yvonne Ellis. And from the Phoenix, Kansas, a freshman in the 2021 National Champion, currently attending the School of Liberty University in North Carolina, number 22, Hunter Anderson. And now, players joining us on the field. From Topeka, Kansas, a sophomore and a 2021 national champion, currently playing at Northwest Oklahoma State University, number one, Larry White. <laughs> From Wichita, Kansas, a sophomore and a 2021 national champion, currently playing at Southwest Oklahoma State University, number four, Jalen Smith. From Fort Cosby, Oklahoma, a sophomore, a 2021 Kansas Jayhawk Conference first team all conference pick, along with me, the 2021 first team all region six selection. Combined with being selected as the second team NJC AA All American, as well as being selected as the most valuable player. In the national tournament, and the 2021 national champion, currently playing at North Texas University, number five, Tyler Perry. <laughs> From Fort Worth, Texas, a freshman and the 2021 national champion, currently playing at the University of Texas Arlington, number twenty-five, Aiden Brigham. From Pensacola, Florida, a freshman, and a 2021 Kansas State All Conference Honorable Mention All Conference Pick, along with being selected as a member of the 2021 NJC AA All National Tournament Team, and a 2021 National Champion, number 10, Love Pettis. From Ward, Kansas, a freshman, and a 2021 National Champion, number 12, Noah Butler. <laughs> From Mount Africa, a freshman, and a 2021 Kansas City Hall Conference second team all conference trip, along with the 2021 Kansas City Hall Conference freshman of the year, and 2021 second team all region six selection, he was voted into the 2000 NJC AA all national tournament team. And 2001 national champion, number 15, 
celebration <laughs> wow from the time i was a little kid and in iowa growing up with the uh the winters and stuff i'd shovel off the driveway and go out there with my basketball in the winter time and still shoot baskets
Conference heartbreak in 2002 for Coffeyville, a one-point loss to Dixie State in the Nashville Championship game. Jay no Herkelman and his Red Ravens were that close to it. Yeah, in 2002 was uh, the first year that we made it to the national tournament. And uh, fortunate that year to play for the national championship, and we lost by one point, and it was heartbreaking. Um, a different journey this year to try to go ahead and do it again with this group. Obviously we know it's not easy. It took 26 years to get to the first one, but you know we, we know what it takes now, so we'll see what happens. Jam and the Red Ravens and all of Coffeyville begins the celebration. <laughs> wow. So excited for Coach Hochul and his group finally getting the championship. The elusive title is now his. Jay Herkelman, the Hall of Famer, with the national championship wow. now to his credit as the Coffeyville Red Ravens win it 108 to 99 over the Cali Tigers. Red Ravens football, US 98.1, keep listening. At 
Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, we take seriously our responsibility of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and health care you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. Back here once again, Veterans Memorial Stadium in Coffeeville. Put your headset on. It's on. Back. Let's go. Strike first. Strike often. Let's uh, let's put some points up. Uh, third quarter, like you did against Highland, where you scored 30. You got a fourth quarter where you scored 21 against Fort Scott. This offense can do it. Strike first, strike off, and that's what we need in the second half. So it will be Garden City kicking off right to left into the wind. The hold is there, and the kick is up, and we're underway. Second half. Kick will sail out of the back of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Coffee's offense will take over. Ball on the 25-yard line. So we'll see who comes in at quarterback. And it looks like it is going to be Jackson Thompson. So good to see. Did he get hurt? He is, before the half. He's played like he's very. He has played very well. He, he's one of the few bright spots uh, on this team. He has been punished for it, uh, but uh, he has played pretty well. Just has not had time to throw. He has definitely taken some shots here in this game, but he will start out pistol formation. One wide receiver each side. Looks like to start back in the backfield. It'll be Star Thomas. Also into the game, Ferrante Cutler. Thompson takes a snap. It's a handoff on first down. Star Thompson moving off to his right, able to get into the second line, past the 30-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Of course, I say that. We've had several short spots here today. And there's another one. They'll put it all the way back to the 30. And that two-yard shot. How about a gain of five, second and five? There you go. Good run. Five-yard gain by Thomas. We've really not seen since the fumble. So hopefully he's put that behind him. And we'll, uh, look for, you know he's, he's been critical in second halves this season. Three Caulfield running backs combined for five rushing yards in that first half. Definitely have some work to do. Makes the handoff. Thompson going towards the air here on second down. Going across the middle. Pass is going to be incomplete. Almost picked off. Childress just about a couple inches away from taking that ball in himself. But eventually loses control of it. And then Garden City just knocks it away. Let me complete third down five. Ball was caught and then bobbled a uh, good defense. And then bobbled upwards and almost led to the interception. Third down and five. He hits the Hockeyville 35-yard line to continue the drive. Be shotgun formation for Thompson. Three wide receivers left. Looks like Terrius Wilson out there. Bryce Childress as well. And finally, looks like that might be Chris Delamy. Out all the way out. Thompson takes a snap, moving out towards his left. He go towards the out route, trying to find Bellamy at the line of scrimmage, but he can't hang on. And that'll bring up fourth down. Three and out is the exact opposite of what you wanted to see here. Do you think worse would have been a turnover? So now comes George Eberly once again. The first half, five punts, an average of 51.8 yards. And an average did come down with those couple of punts into the win, but not by much. Still only Very one. impressive that, first half for Eberle. Only one that did not go inside the 20. Yeah. Definitely a solid first half for Everly. Of course, you don't want to be saying that. You don't want to be saying your punter had a good first half. And Well, at least in the terms of you had five punts. Punts is away. This one going to hop around the Garden City. 40-yard line. Takes a good roll. Going to be picked up. This one will be outside the 20. It was going to take a Herculean effort to do so. Still a pretty solid punt. All said and done. Garden City takes over at their own 34-yard line. Highfield scores 34 points a game offensively, and only four so far in this one. Yeah, I mean, I want to go ahead and clarify. I was talking about Everly. It's not a good thing to say, well, you had five punts, and they were all really good. You don't want to punt five times. Five times. Not in the first half. First half. No, maybe over a total game, but not in the not first in the half. First but since we got the stats, they're good stats. Here's a handoff, William Knight on first down, able to shake off a couple tacklers here. Almost got the push across the line, now to the 40. First contact made behind the line, but as we've seen several times tonight, Cockville also struggling tackling-wise. They yeah. haven't been able to wrap up. And make Which is tackle. odd for them. They're normally a really good tackling team and have yet to really you know, figure it out. Uh, that should have been like a two-yard loss. Instead, it ended up being 
uh, six yard gain. Reese Collier led the team in tackles in the first half. He had 10, averages 10.8 a season for a game. Another handoff tonight. Jukes back to his right. Another five. That'll be enough for the first down. The ball will be placed here about the 45 for thereabouts. First down and 10. Collier averages 10.8, still with the most tackles per game in the NJCAA. A couple bad weeks, tackle, tackle, tackles. But Which shows you how great his first three games were. Yeah. Putting up 20 tackle games. And this one already off to a great start. At least uh, with tackles. See how many tackles. Yeah, exactly. Let's see how many tackles he can put up. Tackles a tackle. Another handoff here on first down and ten. Knight again the ball carrier, but nowhere to go. Bill sends the men up the middle. Looks like Collier might have get involved in that one as well. But several Ravens in on the tackle. They'll bring up second down and ten. That time they are able to bat, uh, bottle up the running back there and keep into a new gain on the play. Bring up second and long. William Knight, the leading rusher for the Bronx Busters in the first half. 84 yards. 43 of those came on a singular touchdown run. But he has been the one who's gotten the most touches tonight as well. 13 carries. Just in the first half. Takes the handoff. Rice Dwarf rolling out towards his left. Pass is complete. Taking the catch. That'll be Sino Jarman. And we're into Cockerville territory. So that'll be a new set of downs. Game about. Game about 14 13 on the play. Defender fell down there, cutting back, and then gave him some nice pitching for an easy pitch and catch first down. Good play fake. One of the with the Confield secondary. There's been a lot of cushion for these Garden City receivers. Reisdorf again going to look to the air on the new first down. Pass across the middle. Almost picked off by Confield this time. A couple players had an opportunity there. In on the coverage, that was Marco Collins, but also with an opportunity to pick that one off. That was Tyler Mullins. Neither could come up with it there. Would have been impressive for either of them to come up with that interception, but there was a chance. Could have been, been a big moment there. If they'd have been able to, to pick that one off. First turnover. Caulfield still looking for its first turnover. Ravens a couple turnovers in the first half. Dorf again to the air. Going out towards the right, looking for that out route. The ball is underthrown. Looking for Charman. Instead, he'll bring up third down and ten on another incomplete pass. I think that one might have been tipped, uh, or it came out awkwardly, one of the two, because that was well short of the intended receiver. So third down and ten. Popular holding for the first two plays of this most recent set of downs. See if they can put it together, though. All being on the Cockerville 42 yard line. It's Dorf shock information. Three wide receivers to the right and one to the left. Dorf quickly hooking over to the right, trying to find the screen pass. Pass is caught by Buckley. Spins off one tackler. Still moving over towards his left, dies forward. He's going to be short in the first down as he gets to about the 36 yard line. It's a gain of around seven, six yards. But again, it will bring up fourth down, fourth down and four. Looks like we'll bring out the one unit. Good job by Cogwell defense. Get the ball back to their offense here. They have not gotten a lot of stops tonight, but this was an important one. William Greek back out to the football away. Of course, you may recognize that name. He does the kicking and the punting. So that again, another team using one guy for everything. Cogwell just kind of the odd one out here. There are three different kickers, punters. Punt is away, though. High up towards the sky. Cockville going to clear out as that one bounces into the end zone. There'll be a touchback here for Cockville. They'll get themselves another offensive drive. So 11.07 remaining in quarter number three. We'll see if this is the drive where Cockville really gets something going here. You're going to need a big play. We talked about it. Either the big play or you put together a long sustained drive. But the way Cockville's really been moving tonight, it seems more likely that you're going to just get that huge play, that busted coverage. That, uh, that burst of speed that we see from Stomas or Lewis or even Farmer to a certain degree. You maybe want a big play here to really kind of open up, well, maybe just build the confidence. Something's got to get momentum onto your side. Something. High formation with two wide receivers left. Down back, that's Star Thomas. He'll take the pitch out to the right. Hit the backfield, tries to dash forward up to the 20, but he will end up short of the line. It'll be a loss of one here as... Again, it's not really there on the running back. Uh, Garden because City. Garden City is just immediately behind him. Garden City is just getting beat off that first step. Controlling the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a dominant performance. Both sides of the ball offensively, equally by the front of Garden City. We 
haven't seen the Cawthill running backs, when they get a good push up on the line, they excel at evading defenders in the second line and beyond. Well, if you can't get them there, you can't succeed. Second down and 11 now. This is the formation. Thompson bobbles the snap. Thompson across the middle, has a man, that's complete. Isaiah Taylor on the catch. Around the first down line, that'll be a gain of 11. James somehow turns that into a dangerous looking play into a first down. Thompson's had a couple of trouble with a couple snaps tonight. That has mostly been on the center. That time, just couldn't hang on. At least for the first couple bobbles. Like you said, able to find a man across the middle. Good adjustment. Way to stay calm. Nice composure. Move the chains, first down. Shotgun formation, first down and 10. Under 10 minutes to go now in this third quarter. Trips to the right. Thompson, he'll take the snap, drops back. Moving over towards his right, being chased from behind. Throws one up towards the right sideline. That ball is kicked off. Underthrown, and that ball will be intercepted. Big hit. But that ball will be picked off by Wembley Malay. Coffinville turns it over for the first time through the air. Jackson Thompson with only his second interception on the season. I think that one, the wind affected that one just a bit. Just could not quite get it to his wide receiver. So, Garden City will take over. First down and 10 in Coffinville territory. Now where they last punted it away. Start on the 37-yard line. It's again, Coffinville just cannot move the football. Pistol formation here for Rice, Dorf and friends. Two to the right, one to the left. Nice Dorf takes the snap, hands it off to Knight. Knight with a big gap to the 30, the 25, the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, untouched, 37 yards. William Knight, his second run of the day. Yeah, that might have been the nail in the coffin. Uh, I don't know if the way that they're playing, I don't know if they can come back into this one. This lead might be insurmountable at this point. And uh, you just got to try to get some positive things going and build it into next week. Huge gap. Half cornerback pushed back about 20 yards by the wide receiver. Wins the blocking game out wide. Untouched to the end zone, William Knight. Again, a 34-point ball game here in Coffeyville. On to attempt the PAT. That'll be William Greig. And lines this one up is up and away and it is going to be good so 9.34 remaining in the third quarter it's Garden City he strikes first in the second half as well they lead this one 39 to 4 back in one minute you're listening to Red Raven football US 98.1 KSN got a car maybe a motorcycle or even a boat do you rent or own your own home if you have any of these call MDB in Coffeeville and then relax NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies, so they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Let nothing stand between you and the tree stand with this fast, durable Kubota Sidekick. Featuring a gas-powered engine that delivers a top speed of 40 miles per hour. Best in class acceleration and handling with cargo and strength to haul what you need hauling. All backed by a two-year, thousand-hour warranty. Get ready for hunting season with the Kubota Sidekick. Visit your local Kubota dealer today. Go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Or go to Roman's Outdoor Power to see Jeff and Chance in Independence or Mike and Kevin in Bartlesville. Here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, 9.33 remaining, 37 yards. William Knight, the latest Garden City touchdown. Bronkbusters lead the Red Ravens tonight by 35 at 39 to 4. William Gray kicks it away once again. It's a rocket shot out the back of the end zone. And much like we've come to expect tonight from both kickers. We haven't seen Owen Lawson a whole lot tonight, but and now the back of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Hoffman takes over on their 25. Well, just once. <laughs> just once to start the game. So we'll see if the Coghill offense can get it cooking this time around. Last drive ended in their first interception. Like you said, Thompson's been, for lack of a better term, he excels even when he's inaccurate. As we've seen tonight, he's at least usually successful at keeping the ball away from defenders. That one, just a lame duck. Yeah, I think it. I, I don't. I think it was more of dying because of the wind than necessarily anything he did. But you kind of have to know that when you're throwing the football like this. Now, strong wind equals a short passing game. That's usually where you want to kind of go for things. Handoff here on first down, moving towards the right side. That'll be Dorian Lewis, past the 30, gets to about the 31. It's a gain of six on first down, brings up second and four. 
Take a look at the rushing numbers from that first half. Believe it or not, Bryce Childress, your leading rusher. One rush for 11 yards. I don't know what that really tells you there, but... It's been a battle. It's just been a battle all game long. Very stout Garden City defense. Combined with mistakes made by Caulfield, including here's another bobble snap that's too high. Toss him no quick, where, but where is at. this coming from? This has not been an issue all and Now we'll have a flag long. after the play. Very high up into the air, but spiraled and the wind didn't take a hold of it. That's just good flag throwing technique. It was. But we'll see what this is as it did come in after the play. It will be a short loss here. As Thompson again mishandles the snap. I don't know where this is coming from because this hasn't been an issue all season. No, I have not had snap issues. Looks like it's going to be another penalty on Garden City. Another personal foul and another late hit on the same player, too, that picked up the one before the half. Alexander Lemon. He'll be charged with the late hit. And that's been the one negative for the Garden City's game tonight. They have had about more personal fouls than I've seen any team commit here this season. In any game, late hits, unsportsmanlike conduct, pass interference. Now you just need a face pass to complete the, and maybe a targeting as well. That would complete the 15-yard uh, circuit. Wins. Yeah, there you go. Pass out to the left. Chris Belly makes the catch. Able to shake off one tackler to the left sideline. He goes. That'll be a first down. Pushed out of bounds in Garden City territory. Oh, about the 47 yard line. Guess what? Thompson taking another shot as he has to be helped up off the field as he completes that pass. Not off the field, but he is still on there. Holding his shoulder. No, he had to be helped off the field. Like he oh, had to be helped off the turf. Not to the sideline. Toss no. remains in the game. Once again, you are right. He's an absolute tough man to take as many shots as he has and remain in the contest. So first down and 10. Ball on the Garden City 47-yard line. Quarterback keeper Thompson trying to move up the middle, but he's taken down behind the line. It'll be a short loss here on first down. Second and 11. I think that was supposed to be a pitch play to... Dorian Lewis, and it was not there, read beautifully by Garden City, covering both the quarterback and the running back. Maybe a pitch option there, doesn't take the pitch, keeps himself, loss of one, second down 11. Ball back to the 48-yard line, 7.45 left on the clock. Shot confirmation with two wide receivers right and one to the left. Dorian Lewis in the game as the halfback. Thompson looking over towards his right. Pass is caught by Batiste. Going to be thrown out of bounds. And it'll be, looks like a gain of one. Gain of two, actually. They'll put the football on the 46 yard line and bring up another third down. Third down and nine. So third down once again, second half, or in the first half. Coffeyville, four of ten third down conversions. Their first third down here of this half, or excuse me, their second third down of the half. Thompson going over towards the left. Had Delany, but Delany can't hang on. That'll bring up another fourth down. <laughs> Delany runs a nice route there. The ball was on target, but he can't bring it in. Yeah, you got to catch that. I mean, those are ones you have to come up with in this one. And just, it was a little little too high for him, but if it hits your hands, it, this is critical moments of these games. You got to catch this. And it's definitely go for it. It may be go for it for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's 35 points. You have to go for it here. Fourth down and nine past midfield. Our first fourth down try of the game. It's pistol formation for Coffeeville. Two wide receivers left. Thompson takes a snap, looking towards the air, looking over towards his left. Watch out the pocket, moving towards the left. Now throws it towards the sideline, pass is complete. Chris Bellamy makes the catch this time around. That'll be enough to move the chance. He makes the catch about the 30-yard line. This is not a stat I want to mention either. This is the deepest Congo has been tonight into Garden City territory. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's a guy 
about time they got there, but a great job by Jackson Thompson to find the open receiver as he rolled out to the far side. Good job uh, by the receiver coming back to that one and making the catch. First down and 10 ball on the 31-yard line. Again, this deepest Coffeyville has been able to find themselves in Bronkbusters territory. No red zone appearances just yet. Back to the same formation, fakes the handoff to Lewis. Thompson going out to his right, trying to find, I believe that was a pass, maybe intended for Cutler or Taylor, kind of doing it between them. Yeah, I think it was Taylor, and I just think uh, Taylor slipped coming back to it. He couldn't quite get back to the ball. Kind of put it in between them. That'll bring up second down and ten. You've seen Cutler in the flat. I thought maybe that ball was a little bit overthrown, but also had Taylor in the same area. Again, second down and ten, ball in the 31. Just over six minutes remaining here in this third quarter. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Got your four crew out there. Lewis in the backfield. Thompson towards the air, going towards the out route again. He felt me a bit too much, that throw by Thompson. And that's really kind of another issue I think that's really going on here with the Red Ravens tonight. Nobody is helping each other out. You can't seem, you don't yeah. have the synergy. Yeah. Whether it's Thompson overthrowing the open receiver, the open receiver dropping a good Thompson ball, the Stop offensive line not giving to Thompson in the pocket. You're just, you're just out of sync. You have no synergy. And it's even going down to the level of sometimes you just can't even handle the snap. Yeah. It's just, it's a lack. It's just an amazing lack of synergy tonight as we see once again another throw, another throw overthrown. Thompson does go to the air on third down. Now going to go deep, trying to find Taylor more and more. There's another ball that could potentially have been caught. Taylor can't hang on. It was tough. Again, with either critical in this game, this is when somebody has to step up. It has to be, it has to be caught. So again, fourth down and ten upcoming. Caulfield able to convert the first fourth down. I'll try to do it again. Have to. Still about 21 minutes of game time. But you're going to need five touchdowns in that 21 minutes. Got to yeah. score every four minutes, and as we've seen, well, just scoring one in about, what is it, 39 minutes? Yeah. It's it been is, impossible. It hasn't been easy. One back in the backfield, four wide receiver sets. Sends Lewis out towards the left, going across the middle. That ball is almost interception. Batiste had no idea that that ball was in the area. And he had a receiver open, I think. Childress was open. Turnover on down. Batiste had no idea that ball was coming. That's exactly what I'm talking about. There's no synergy tonight. Yeah, anybody on this call at Chemistry. It's, it's been a tough night. So Garden City takes over once again. First down and ten. Ball on the Northwestern's 31-yard line. 5:46 remaining in quarter number three. Again, don't forget next week, heading to Independence Montgomery County Showdown. We're going to get eight days to kind of take a look at what happened here tonight. Trying to pick up the pieces for a. In-county rival, and off William Knight on first down, pushes forward through the tackle and the guard. Indy will have had 15 to prepare for this game. Of course, Indy on the high this week. 6-0 on the season, 7-0 on the season. The only, if, if, if this score holds, the only undefeated team left in the Jayhawks. And of course, with several teams in the top five losing this week, or at least the number one team losing this week, Two of the See where Indy ends up. Unfortunately, Indy on a bye. About the wrong time to end up on a bye. One and five both fall. On the mind of the voters. Possibly six. But we'll see if maybe Indy climbs back into that top three this week. It's pistol formation here for the Bronkbusters on second down and four. Reisdorf takes a snap to hand off. Albert on the carry, but he's going to be taken down behind the line. Looks like Rare getting to the to football that you. time. Trevin Stacker, linebacker, gets through, pushes him back a yard. Third down and five upcoming. Yeah, stack at that time, able to uh, get him in the backfield. Haven't seen too many negative plays with the Garden City offense. Really have not, but got to keep playing here. It might be down 35, but this is still valuable game time. You can't afford to take the foot off the gas here and just accept the loss or accept anything, really. You have to keep playing until that final whistle. See crazier things happen. So third and five, Rice Door shot confirmation with trips to the left. They have had some action before the snap, and that we do. We fall start here called against the Rockbusters. That'll bring up third down and ten instead. 
Yeah, definitely going to back him up, make it third and long, and that is, is, gives this defense a better opportunity here to get the ball back to their offense. Ball start will be called on the Bronkbusters wide receiver, the tight end, excuse me, favor of Okabe. Hey, don't forget, on another station of ours tomorrow, we get City Chiefs football. On the mighty 690 KGGF, who are they taking on again? Tennessee, I knew that. Taking on the Titans, and what time is the kickoff, Matt? I believe it's a new kickoff. Titans, you know, I come in, and Derrick Henry is going to look to run for about 300 yards. <laughs> 690 AM KGGF. I wish. Weisdorf looking towards the air once again across the middle. Has a man. That ball is going to be caught. On the reception, that is Martez Jones. Again, that long snapper kind of tight end combination. And that'll be enough for the first down on third down and 10. It's a gain of about 13. I mean, I hope the Chiefs win. And I hope Derrick Henry rushes for 300 yards. Yep. Cop between a rock and a hard place new, on that one. New kickoff. Four and two versus three and three. One o'clock, uh, or sorry, 11 o'clock. The pregame on 6:90 a.m. Body 6:90. Now under four minutes left to go in quarter number three. Again, a first down and ten after the gain of about 13 on the previous play. Nice door shotgun with two wide receivers left, one to the right. Back in the backfield, that'll be Talbert. Now seeing a man in motion, that'll be Jones over to the right. Takes the snap, hands it off to Talbert, following his lead blockers, bouncing it out to the right. Getting taken down after a short gain. Looks like first man to the ball there, Tyler Mullins. Dropping low and making the big hit. Rams second down at nine. That has been a problem for Tom as well on defense. We kind of touched on it on that touchdown, I believe, just before the half. Coffeyville has just been a little bit slow to get into that tackle. They've been standing up and they've been allowing these Garden City running backs to just run right over. Not yeah. that time, though. Mullins makes a good hit. Yeah, they haven't been able to get leverage uh, on very many tackles tonight. So second down and nine. Trips to the left and one to the right. Nice door, takes a snap, makes the handoff to Talbert. Slant route across the middle, pass is caught by Jones. That'll be around the first down marker. And it'll be enough to move the chains for another first down. Hats off to this Garden City team. I mean, Reisdorf looks composed. Uh, he hasn't been under a lot of pressure. He's just kind of taking a part in this talk about defense every time they give a little bit of uh, space and find the hole. And uh, it's just having a really great offensive game. The running backs have done a really good job. The offensive line of I mean, Garden City had to come in here and play their A game, and they did. And uh, unfortunately, Kaku came in here and played the worst game. Anyway, here's a handoff to Talbert, bouncing out towards the right. Kyle going to form here for momentum, going to be called after a short kick of the one. That'll be second down at nine, but we'll take a look at the game plan coming in. Now we will have the flags to push and shove it. Continues, I think, continued a long time ago. But, uh, talking about the push and shove, really, but uh, either way, the streak continues. But we take a look at what Guard City did immediately from the get-go. Slight routes across the middle, taking advantage of the distance of the space that Cobbville tends to give. And that really allowed the passing game to shine. And I mean, that doesn't explain the running or anything else really, but it just seems like Garden City well, had the game plan yeah, coming in. That, that's what they I knew what they wanted to do, and they've accomplished yeah. it much better than Cobbville's done yeah. with their own game. They, they had their game plan coming in, and it has worked, and it's been the better game plan tonight. I, I, I was coming out of the box. Uh, defense was a lot better, but against a much worse team. We'll see what they look like against Independence next week, but uh, I don't know what's happening with this Cobbleville team. They just did not look good. They looked very sluggish the last two weeks. Once more, my conduct called against Garden City. That's been the one bright spot for Cobbleville. They have not been baited into these unsportsmanlikes. But Garden's got a but Garden of, has. Garden has more unsportsmanlike conduct penalty yards than Cobbleville may have offensive yards. Didn't really touch on that at halftime, but that is one of the more unfortunate statistics tonight. More penalty yards for the Bronx Busters than Cockfield's able to been able to muster an offense. Rice Dorf tried to hand it off here. Looks like that might have been a miscommunication there. Just kind of slipped into the pocket of Talbert. Cockfield got a ball hawk for the ball there. Back him up even further. Rice Dorf, I think, briefly thought about it. Rice Dorf thought he was actually going to drop back to pass. Realized he should have been getting it off to Talbert. Or didn't really know. Take the ball there. So, it'll be another loss. This time about a loss of three. Third down and 27. Third minute to go in this third quarter. Opportunity here to get him into fourth and long and get the ball back. 
Third down, 27. Nice dwarf in shotgun formation. Three wide receivers left, one right. All just shy of the right hash. Nystorf fakes the throw, now looking over towards the flat. Pass is caught by Jones. It's across the 40 and the 45. Now finally brought down by Collier. Coming in from deep coverage. Will be a gain of about eight, but that won't be nearly enough for the first down. Bring up fourth down and about 20 to go. This is normally a very good solo tackling team, you know, one on one tackles, open field tackles. But the night guard does a really good job of breaking free of those solo tackles. It's taken a whole group of Ravens to bring people down in this, in this matchup. So, seven points across the line for the Broncosters here in quarter number three, but we'll move on to the final 15 minutes of play. We'll see if Collinville can at least close the gap a little bit here tonight. Maybe a little bit too late, though, to make the full comeback. Back in one minute, you're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, QSN. Want to learn a new language so it will actually stick? Try Babbel. Practice real-life conversations in the Babbel app. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Get personalized help in Babbel's live online classes. Classes are limited to six people, so everyone can get the help they need. A few words and phrases with fun games, or dive into the culture with short videos. Whatever your learning style, Babbel gives you the tools you need. Babbel. More ways to learn. Start learning a new language today at Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Wake up to Wendy's and get a bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. Made with fresh cracked eggs and served on a hot buttery croissant that's fluffy enough to sleep. Uh-uh. It's time to wakey wakey. Hit the Wendy's drive through and get your bacon or sausage egg and Swiss breakfast croissant for just $1.99. That's a better breakfast for just $1.99. Only at Wendy's. We got you. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Third-party delivery prices may vary. Not valid in a combo. Start of the fourth quarter here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Garden City on to punt the football away. Almost blocked, but does get the kick away. Coffeeville clears out, bouncing up and down. Eventually takes a friendly Garden City roll. They picked up here at about the 21-yard line. 39-4. to as we start the fourth quarter of play, Coffeyville trailing by 13 five. Trailing by a full five scores here as we start the quarter. And again, I mean, I'm an optimistic guy by nature. But this one, don't think we're coming back. Yeah, I just, I don't expect a big change from what we've seen so far uh, in this one. Uh, but you, you'd like to score a touchdown at least. Try to get into the end zone. Ways and you know you haven't really done it much offensively at all. Will Bone into the ball game as he hands it off. First down. First down, good for about three yards. Brings up second down and seven. Stats from the third quarter. Coffeeville above the 100-yard mark for the game, though. 56 plays, 107 yards. Shotgun here for Bone. Two backs to the backfield. That includes Lewis and Cutler. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Bone takes a snap here. Ball is through on the handoff to Lewis. Keeps it himself. That's a great fake. Bone's got some room up the right side. Into the 15, to the 45. First out of bounds. It's about the longest run. Bill's had tonight. Bill Bone. There you go. Bill Bone picks up a big play there. And, and we, know, we know Bone's athletic. We've seen it. Receivers left, one right. Bone takes a snap, moving out towards his left. Settle, throws towards the sideline. Ball is going to be dropped. Catch passes. Got to catch passes. Chris Bellamy can't find the mark there. But an issue. Exactly. That just goes back to what we're saying when the quarterbacks are putting the ball there. Carry. 
platforms, no gain. Third down and coming. There's a chance that this is, uh, uh, there's a chance that you could see this Garden City team again uh, in, the, in the playoffs. Yeah, of course, we'll have to see how the playoffs kind of shake out as we get to that point. They've done a lot of great work into maybe securing that first round home matchup. They're, I mean, they're in danger of falling to the three spot. Yeah, you got to keep winning. A, can't afford to tonight, fall back now. And a loss next week. Garden still has to get by Butler. Pitch out towards the right. No fake. Bone moving out towards his left. Under pressure, but throws. Has a Cash tonight for Carterius Wilson. He's usually good for a few. He's just been kept silent today, but we have an injured Bronkbuster and a flag on the field. And this one might be coming back. Certainly the indication here is Caulfield walks back toward the 50-yard line. Injured Bronkbuster on the play. That was Darius Johnson. He is okay. He is up and walking to the sideline. Of course, the last question left is what is that flag? That might just sum up the entire game, period. Big play, and then you know, cost yourself. I don't know what this flag is going to be. It's flown around the area of where Johnson was injured. Yes, I mean, it was thrown right next to it. It was on the ground. I, at first, I didn't realize it was a flag. I thought it might have been a towel. But. The indication here. And Coffeyville will have a player ejected. Unsportsmanlike foul on what was your biggest play of the game. I don't even know what goes through your mind to think about grabbing a player by the helmet like that. Player ejected from the game. Again, number 75. That'll be Ethan Ellis. I don't know. I mean, Lacker's already frustrated, but those are the things that really frustrate him. So, uh, this is this is uh, next practice. I can already tell is not going to be a fun. You have a lot to work to do next week, and again, that's just the icing on the cake. You to get a huge game, would have had a football the two yard line, and you choose to grab a player by the helmet and get yourself ejected from the game in the fourth quarter of what is effectively pretty much an ideal. Why would you do something? Frustration and uh, immaturity and unfortunately. Nothing to prove in a situation like that. So, instead of a football on the two-yard line or so, we'll have third down and 25. Twelve minutes left on the clock. Boom, back to pass. Going to go another deep ball, but this ball is going to be way overthrown. And it'll fall incomplete. Chris Bellman, the intended receiver on the play. Fourth and 25 upcoming. <laughs> You know me, Matt, you know I have my pet peeves. That's about the worst instance of said pet yeah. peeve this season. So George Everly on to punt the football away once again. White flag has been waved by Jeff White from the top of the team. I mean, can you really even say that, though? They're still taking deep shots of the... The, the white flag, you're, you're punting, you're punting down. Well, yes, I guess in that case. You are still taking deep shots down the field. You're trying to maybe get some any kind of offense here in tonight's game. Everly's punch is away again. Remember, wind at the back. And we feel it about the 15-yard line. Keelan Kennedy on the return. Able to break three. It will break through three Caulfield defenders. Still on his feet as he breaks a fourth. Finally taken down about the 26-yard line. It's a return of about 11 yards, and that's where the Bronkbusters will take over. Uh, hopefully the rivalry game gets fired up next week. They got a lot to work on. Hopefully this is a good wake-up call. I thought that's what the Fort Scott game was going to be, but you come out flat like this, and he's going to do the exact same thing to you. The guard has done to you tonight. And, of course, there's going to be a huge crowd for that game. You'll want to put out your best foot. you want to really show what people are, what you're worth, as this is going to be a game with a lot of eyes on it. You, 
win next week, and you can still get that number one overall seed. Yeah, there's a lot riding on the line, even with the loss tonight. This does not change anything. This has not really changed the importance of next week's game. Here's a handoff to William Knight on first down. Over the left side, but he's pushed back. Not able to take him down. Four momentum going to be called after about two yards. Second down and eight. Give him three. Second down and seven. Ball on the 29-yard line. 11-13 remaining here in this contest. Again, if you're just now joining us, 39-4. to four. Our score, Garden City leads Coffeyville by 35. The four points coming on a safety and block PAT in return. Takes the handoff. Reisdorf going over to the left. Catch is made by Jones. It's a modest gain of about two or three. I think they'll give him three, bring up third down and four. Back-to-back -back games, unless something changes here, where the Red Ravens have not forced a turnover, which was really their bread and butter in those first four games of the season. Had their chances. A couple chances at a pick here tonight. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with either. Also had a chance at a fumble recovery a little bit earlier tonight, but... Rolled down. Shotgun formation here for Rice Dwarf. Four wide receivers, two to each side. Now back looking over towards the sideline. Play clock down to about 10 seconds. Now going to get the snap. Back to Pats. Looking over towards the right. Has a man in the flat, but instead goes over the middle. Patch is, patch is made again by Jones. And that'll be enough for a first down as again, Cockville giving a lot of room over the middle for Garden City to take advantage of. Jones was wide open there, too, right across the middle of the field. So on third and four, they'll move the chains. First down and ten. Ball now on the Garden City 44-yard line. Two wide receivers right and one to the left. Back to the backfield. Looks like Devin Hodges. His time now takes a snap, takes the handoff to Hodges. Reisdorf rolling out towards his left, towards the sideline. Again, the catch is made. Again, that'll move the chains. First down and 10. Garden not taking their foot off the gas here at all. First down and 10. After the gain of 11. Now into Caulfield territory. Ball in the 44 yard line. Two wide receivers left and one to the right. Now under 10 minutes left to go, by the way. 9.15 left to go on the clock. Sends a man in motion over towards the right. That's Jones. Here's a handoff. Hodges on the carry. Cuts up field past the 40 to the 35. Taken down. Taking down about the first down line. Looks like they'll give it to him. Gain of 10. Two plays, two first downs. Still rolling right along is this Garden offense. Nothing's changed. You'd think maybe with Reisdorf's injury issues and a couple of running backs banged up as well, you'd bring in the backups up this much. But Garden not happy, I guess, with a 35-point win. Well, perhaps trying to impress the voters that be. Maybe trying to get back a into huge the... Huge victory uh, over what was previously the number six team in the land. Maybe getting into the top ten. Again, it really... You have to be basically in the top two to get that national championship shot. Top four, excuse me. But anything to impress the voters. Here's a ball across the middle. Dangerous ball. Ball's incomplete. Probably could have been pass interference there. Got there a little early. Tender receiver Sean Buckley. Bring up second down and ten. So yeah, you got to do everything. Garden City already a little bit on the fringes here as a two-loss team. But, again, a huge victory over a previously undefeated Confield here. Voters at least got to take notice. Yeah, it should maybe vault you back. Or, uh, it could be interesting in how much it moves them forward because they're still a two-loss team. Yes. I think they probably move up to, I don't know, maybe 12, 13, uh, 10 maybe. But I don't see Confield falling out of the top 10. It's still a top 10 matchup next week. Of course, number one loss today, Jones College. Handoff, Hodges, second down, gets a yard, third down and nine upcoming. 
uh, no, number five also lost today. And now a flag after the fact. And a lot of those. There has been enough healthy flags after the fact. I think we've had more flags after the play than during the play tonight. Maybe. It's possible. What is this one going to be on? Get the indication. Another unsportsmanlike conduct called on Garden City. We're looking for a record here. I don't think I've ever seen so many unsportsmanlike conducts called on a winning team before in my life. I believe that is number six called on them tonight. That's, had That's a bunch. 90 yards of penalties. They've had a bunch. So instead of second and nine, I'll bring a second down and 25. 8.06 remaining now in the fourth quarter. Got anything witty to say about that? No. Nope, kind of looking at you for that one. Been a tough one, man. I, it's a tough one. I just one. don't. I've never seen a team so many unsportsmanlike. likes. When you're winning by 35. Takes the handoff. Reisdorf to the air. Going down the right sideline. Ball's overthrown. Incomplete. It says a lot about Third coaching. 25. Unfortunately, I mean, it just... Garden's had issues. This is not anything new. It didn't change when Jeff Sims left. It hasn't, you know, um, Coach Minnick hasn't made anything different. It's a cultural thing. And uh, Garden's always had their, their problems. You look at what them and Indy did back when Sims was there during the uh, last chance U days. And Painted such a lovely picture of Juco football. Yes. But Fourth and 25. Obviously, Coach Minnick, a lot of success. Yeah, he's seen Garden. success. 15 sure. and 4. But, but at, you just, at what point do you wonder, man, I see more unsportsmanlike likes here yeah. in one game than I will see probably an entire NFL season. We're going to have a flag here. That'll be a delay of game. But at what point just senseless do you just wonder days. about it? Senseless what point do you wonder that this level of football has an unsportsmanlike like problem? And I understand you want to prove yourself. You want to show that you have that fire, that aggression. But I don't think that the way to show it is by all well, these no, penalties. no, there's a lack of discipline at this. At, yeah, for sure. Just got to wonder about it here as William Gregg is on to punt. Fourth and 30. Punts up and away. Isaiah Tyler calls for the fair catch. Makes the catch. And Coffeyville will take over their latest drive here at the 28-yard line. So Will Bone back out onto the field. His next drive. And Caulfield had an opportunity to put the ball in about the two-yard line last drive out. Beautiful ball called back by the like, personal foul of Caulfield's own. Caulfield getting the ejection. Ethan Ellis ejected from the ball game. How do ejections work at this level? He's first uh, either suspended. I think he's suspended for the uh, entire rest of the game. And we have not had to worry about that. That is the first time a Caulfield player has been ejected. We've seen a fair share of ejections this year. Just for other teams. Here's a ball across the middle. Chris Bellamy makes the catch. Running right to left, however. It will still get the first down. Just trying to create some separation. It's a gain of about 12. Yeah, I think he's trying to make something happen out of that. And good closeout speed by the defender there. And yeah, get the first down and then try to make a play. The, yes. get the first down, though. Nice route over the middle there for Bellamy. More receptions than any Red Raven tonight. Pistol formation here on first down and 10. Ball in the Garden City or ball in the golf. Coffeeville, 38-yard line. Bone fakes the handoff, looking over towards the left. Another pass caught. Again, this is going to be William Dennis, but he'll be well behind the line. Be a loss of three. Bring up second down and 13. Actually, nope. They'll say he was able to at least push forward to the 37. So how about a loss of one on the catch? Second and 11. Just trying to do anything positive. Build a bond for next week. Six and a half minutes left to go here in quarter number four. Going again, pistol formation. Two to the right, one to the left. Don't take a snap. Hands it off here. On the carry, Torrance Farmer, but he's able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe an extra yard. 
I'll place it at the 40. And that'll set up second down and eight. Third down and eight upcoming. Need to get to the 48-yard line to continue the drive. Again, 39-4 to four our score. Caulfield trailing by 35 in the final clutches of this one. Cone faking the handoff. No, gives it off to Farmer. An option read. Farmer's going to jump over another man. He's done that twice tonight. Shows very impressive. Yes. Very, very impressive. Very athletic. That move, and he actually might have got the first down for it. I think it did help him get the first nope, down. It's going to be a yard shy, at least that's the initial spot. But I think we'll see. Maybe Coffey will go for it here on fourth and one. I mean, you got nothing to lose. Why not? But it will be fourth and one, a gain of seven. No reason not to go for it. Fourth and short here. Cutler back into the game alongside Dennis. See what they go for here as the clock just continues to tick. It's going to be eye formation. Coffeyville packs it in. No wide receiver set. Takes the pitch out to the right. Bone going to run over to the left with the bootleg. Might try to keep it himself. Reaches out towards the first down line. But where do they give it to him? Looks like it's going to be right on the line. He needed one yard. And he got that exact yard he needed to continue the drive. Ran a lot more than one yard, trying to pick up the one yard. So it will be first down and ten here for Coffeyville. Stone so again gets it done with the legs. First down and ten, one yard shy of the 50. All on the Coffeyville 49-yard line. And going back to I formation with one wide receiver out to the right. Now a whistle. It so looks like we've got some debris down over on the field, over near the Coffeyville end zone. Just clear that out real quick. Oh, he's got a Hawkeye. He was the one who spotted that. That's about 50 yards downfield. Reminds me of the time, uh, Coffeyville, my first season, they were trying to make a late comeback against NEO, and a rainstorm hit all of a sudden. And a bunch of papers and trash just came flying out onto the field. First down and 10. Bone fakes the handoff, looking towards the air. Just going to chuck one deep. Has a man wide open, but is the ball there? Yes, it is. Ravens take wide touchdown. It's not much, but it's a consolation touchdown. And what a beautiful ball for Will Bone. It's the best pass I've seen him throw all season. Beautifully thrown ball. And what way to run under it and make the, make the touchdown. That's what you like to see. I mean, you, you want to build upon something. And and uh, having that long pass and scoring and wide open wide receiver being able to convert like that, that's something to hang your hat on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you may say it's an overreaction and you're still down 29, but at the end of the day, you want to see want something positive. Something, positive. Yes. something that makes you say, okay, we can still do it heading into next week. It doesn't completely shut you down. And so that's a huge ploy to have right before the end of the game. 51 yards, Will Bone to Isaiah Taylor. Kick is up and away. Force Taylor. First time we've seen him tonight. Puts it through the uprights. And that will be good. So with 4.06 remaining here in quarter number four. Hawkville is able to cut the lead. Still 28. But a beautiful ball for backup quarterback Will Bone. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football. US 98.1 KUSN. Customer service is the top priority at Gillum Liquors and Coffee Mill. That's what sets them apart. Gillum's tries down a little extra in the way of personal service. How? Well, they keep up on customer favorite wines and spirits. Check out the local favorites on display. And if you don't see your favorite, if it's available for sale in Kansas, Gillum will special order just for you. It's all about customer satisfaction at Gillum Liquors. For the largest wine selection, vast array of spirits, and the coldest beer in town, visit Gillum Liquor, 1713 West 8th and Coffee Mill. Open seven days a week. Breathe easy. No problem with the Lennox Healthy Climate System from Lee's Cooling and Heating and Independence. Allergens, animal dander, dust, all of these can really affect your quality of breathing. But with the Lennox Healthy Climate System, you can stay in control of the air in your home. This system takes care of all air aspects, from humidity levels to indoor pollutants. Air is life. Enjoy perfect comfort with the Lennox Healthy Climate System, available at Lee's Cooling and Heating, 118 South Ace and Independence. Call 620-331-2310. 10 or visit leeschooling.com. 
back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Coffeyville. 51 yards. Bill Bone to Isaiah Taylor as the kick sails way beyond the Bronx Busters here. They were lined up in their onside kick formation. I can tell you what, a well of an effort here. If Coffeyville did decide to go for the onside kick, they are still trailing by 28 despite the beautiful ball. It's 39-11 as we come back. Connor Harvick, Matt Jordan alongside with me here on US 98.1 KUSN. But yeah, I mean, best ball we've seen all game. And actually, this might shock you a bit. Longest scoring play of the game. Not the longest play. That would actually go to the very first play of the game. Longest scoring play. But the longest scoring play of the game here tonight. It's good for coffee, though. Garden City back here on offense once again. Reinsdorf takes a snap. It's a handoff to Knight. Knight bounces out to the right. We've taken down a couple Ravens there. That includes playing one of the men to the ball there. Timmerns Adams. Also in on the tackle, Bishop Fitzgerald. A couple players here in at the tail end of this game that we don't normally see. Obviously, this one pretty much out of hand. Getting a little bit out of time here. A couple of them make the stop. But yeah, Caulfield pretty much pulling their starters here on defense at the tail end. Don't maybe want to risk injury going into next week's contest. That's probably smart. Garden City, though, still I can't pull out believe, four yeah, effort. I, I can't believe that they've still got all their Rice their Dorf in, Knight in at quarterback or running back. Three wide receivers left. Hands it off here to Knight. Could be stood up at the line, taken down. Tell you what, the non first team. Doing a good job. Be able to put a couple, a couple of big stops here on the first couple plays of the drive. You still have a couple of starters out there. Jordan Crawford involved on that tackle. Only start on the defensive line. Now under three minutes to go. So third down here, third down and eight. Under three minutes left to go, 2.35 on the clock. Eisdorf takes a snap, hands it off here tonight. Nope, it's a quarterback read, but neither decision was the right one there. Defensive line again pushes through. Loss of one here on third down. Second down. Third down. Nope, I was right. I'll bring up fourth down and nine. It looks like Garden City may just punt the football away once again. Caw continues to run. It's Garden City in absolutely no rush to bring the punt unit onto the field, it looks like. Well, nobody's really in any rush to do anything. Actually, we have a oh no the play clock stops Garden City not even bringing out a unit here it looks like they'll just take a timeout at the end of the play clock here not really sure we've reached the point where we need to take timeouts like this we need to run off the clock this in this fashion but that is what they'll do. 151 here. Garden City takes its first timeout of the second half. We'll take a 60 second timeout. Coming right back. 39 11. So we'll go ahead and keep it here. And they're not. I think it was yeah. one of those timeouts just to stop the play clock from running out. And uh, now we're trotting back out on the field. Come back out here. William Gregg on to punt it away. Back to receive Isaiah Taylor. Wind still whipping here. We'll be into the wind once again. Whistle sounds. We'll get back to action here. And Greg on to punt. Taylor back to receive. Taylor standing about the 45 yard line of Coffeyville. Punts up and away. High arcing kick. Going to be fielded. Taylor calling fair catch at about the 48 yard line of Coffeyville. That's where the Ravens will take over. A minute 44 on the clock. And Will Bone back out once again. Previous drive, Coffeyville picking up its first touchdown of the game 51 yards. What do you do now? Just take another shot? Try to do it again? Might as well. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, that one was 51. This, this could be 52. Clearly doesn't hurt. I believe. 
at least on the defensive side, Garden City has made some changes. It will be shot confirmation here for Bone. Two wide receivers. Sends men out to the left. Make that three wide receivers now. As Lewis joins him over there. Back to pass. Over the middle on a slant route. That ball is going to be caught. Pass the place. Number 87, Andrew Stackenberg. Caught by Andrew Schultz. The yardage is good enough for a first down for the Red Ravens. The Ravens will the ball first and ten. The ball on the blood bunker. Long Buster's 20 yard line. Kind of breaks your heart a little bit. Why didn't we have this? I don't know, the first 12, 15 drives of the game. So here's Chunky Yard there. Try 32 on the catch. Cockhill once again finds himself in the red zone. Shot confirmation here for Bone. He was off to the left. Bone looking towards the air again, going over the middle. Schnackenberg can't hang on. That would have been another touchdown. Pass and for number 87. Andrew Schnackenberg passes incomplete. Play does bring up a second down and 10. Had Schnackenberg open on the seam route. But Schnackenberg just cannot hang on. Maybe anticipating the contact a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he could hear the footsteps, but uh, gotta, you got to hold on to it. You're a big man. Schnackenberg coming in 6'4", 230 pounds from Park City, Kansas. Second down and 10. Same formation, three wide receiver set. Bone fakes the pitch out to the right, now going to take it with his legs. Has Bellamy in front of him to the 10, jumps out of bounds about the 7. Tell you what, Will Bones playing like a man who wants to earn some brownie points. Quarterback uh, number two, man Will who wants Bones, to get his starting job Tom back. Keeper. This is a great opportunity, especially in the closing stage of this one. I mean, Thompson didn't play bad. Yes, he just didn't have the ability to, you know. Yard is good enough for a first down. He didn't have room to throw. He's under pressure most of the game. I mean, the it line. was a rough game for Jackson Thompson. And every game matters. Every second matters when you're in there. You never want to take a play off. That has been good to see Bone. With some great balls, doing some work with his legs. Now going towards the air once again. Slant right across the middle, another ball. That bounces off the hands of Bellamy and falls incomplete. They'll bring up second down and goal. I mean, I'm pretty sure the majority 13, of the offense Chris um, Bellamy. in this fourth quarter the one ball and a quarterback. You know, some of that Deerville. may have to do with Garden be a little lax. They're up by four scores, five scores. Play they really don't really need to down. you know, play as, as, as tight as they have been. But uh, still good to see some positives happen uh, offensively for the Red Ravens. Of course, Bone, a freshman from Kissimmee, Florida, maybe trying to impress for next season as well. Very well. And impressive enough in the preseason to be named the opening day starter. He's clearly talented. Clearly a talented quarterback, yes. He's been impressive the little we've seen him. Trying to go across the middle once again. Big hit. Yeah, the for number 13. This Bones time it's overthrown. Bone takes a incomplete. shot that time. Play to bring it yeah, down. Three Bronkbusters through the line on that one. Generally you talk about, you know, after good games, your quarterbacks owe the the uh, lo uh, lineman good, you know, dinner or, yeah. you know, something. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the linemen need to take Bone and Thompson out to dinner to apologize for the hits that they've given up in this game. Third down and goal from the eight-yard line now. 51 seconds on the clock. Caulfield again just trying to close the gap a little bit tonight. Make the score line a little bit more respectable. Bone to the air again, going out towards the flat. Lewis trips and falls. Pass and ten Fourth down and eight. Now we'll flag out the fact it looks like we're making yeah, another personal foul in the Garden well. City. Why are you arguing with the ref? 46 seconds left in the game about losing your helmet, although it may be on Coffeville, that helmet may have had something to do with it. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. see. This feels like the game that just won't end. We'll have to wait and see as we will most likely see Forrest Taylor trot on for a field goal. I don't know. We may try more, to score. More go for it. Who knows? Yeah. Depends. I mean, it could be fourth and goal from the 22. Could be an automatic first down. It could be anything could be, at this yeah, point. Depending on who Again, it's on. The flag came in late. It's on the Cotton City players We're see. Holding his arms out at the referee. Fourth and goal from the, what, 23-yard line if it's on Cotton ball. Or personal foul for 51 offense. Yeah. Now it'll be a personal foul, foul here on Coffee. Fourth down. Fourth and Fourth goal foul, from two may stay in the game. Fourth and goal for the 23-yard line. Well, looks like Caulfield's just going to go for it. No Forrest Taylor here. 
Just and take a shot. Red Ravens will have you see the receivers open fourth from about this range. Go, ball on the but it's obvious what the play call might be if you're going to take a shot towards the end zone. Yeah, you I see mean, Garden City playing those safeties way off at about the seven-yard line. Everyone, linebackers, safeties, everybody's back a bit. Shotgun formation with three wide receivers. Bone fakes the handoff. Pressure in the pocket, rolls out to his right, and he's going to be sacked. Taken down at about the 29-yard line, and that'll pretty much do it. And, and here's a flag. The play. <laughs> Why not? On the play number two, Will Why play. not? Has on the key, they're on learn. tackle number two, Xavier Peters. Personal foul. When are we going to get a personal foul? I don't know. When are we? When is the crowd going to get a personal foul? I think we're almost I've seen about that happen. Now. I have seen it, too. Funny enough. I received a warning. I have After two. The play, As the announcer. Conduct, number two, defense, his first. Ball being and that'll be another unsportsmanlike conduct here on Garden City. Down Garden City. However, it will still be first down for Garden City as that's after the play. I got a warning my first year here doing CCC basketball. I got a warning for saying a ball wasn't out of bounds. As did not take too kindly to me saying that was not out of bounds. As gave a, a warning, uh, told me to watch myself. It was, like, it was before I came here. Yes. As an it was before I came here. Yep. I I've was... never seen it. I looked at the man, I blinked a couple times, and then said it again. I, uh, Once he moved away, of course. We're not, yeah. we're not gonna, we're not gonna risk that. No we have a job to do here. Yeah, mine came here uh, at a game. Uh, I don't remember who we were playing, but I was complaining about the officials, and he heard me. I'm not really one to complain about the officiating myself, but either way. Garden City, I know you are. Garden City will take a knee, and that will pretty much do it here tonight. So, Cockfield's dead and undefeated season will come to a close here tonight. Again, just too many costly mistakes in the early game, a comedy of errors, so to speak. And just offensively, never really got going in this one until it was much, much too late. So, Cockfield will fall here tonight to the Garden City Bronkbusters, 39-11. to This one finally comes to a close. So what we're going to do here in the post game, we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to make it about a three, no, let's make it a four minute timeout. No, I'll tell you what, how about two? Make it a two minute timeout. We'll give the stat uh, guy the chance to give off some stats here to me. And then we will go up and we'll start our post game here today. But again, final score 39 to 11. You listen to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, King Descent. Hey, Coffeeville. This is your favorite banker from Community State Bank, and I just popped into your favorite radio station to let you know that interest rates are at an all-time low. So if you've been looking to refinance your home, now is the time. Give us a call at 251-1313 or stop by and see us at 1414 West 11th Street. This has been your favorite banker, Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. You date like you aren't 22 anymore. Like, emotionally mature is kind of hot to you now. And six texts sent back to back is totally cool. You date like your experiences, relationships, they haven't just made you you, they made you interesting. Young love was great, but dating as a fully formed, emotionally mature human? Man, that's on a whole other level. Download the Match app today. Nya, nya, nya. Ba, mm, ba, ba, bue. Zimbabwe. <clears throat> the broken Bunsen burner burns so bright. South. Jamie. Southeast Asian Peninsula. Hey, hey, Jamie. Yes. I think the only line we need from you today is drivers who switch to progressive could say big. Cool. I just got to finish my warm-ups. <clears throat> foul, foul, throw in the towel. History, history. Switch history, to progressive history. today. Santa ski slalom in a salmon skin suit. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Connor Harvey back with you here today, US 98.1 KUSN. Tonight's game is in the books. The Cockfield Red Ravens fall tonight for the first time this season. 
by a final score of 39 to 11. Connor Harbin here with you today. Matt Jordan, he has gone home for the night, but we take a look at the final stats from tonight's ball game. And again, it really was just a very, very poor first half for Coffeyville. That kind of spells their doom from the get-go. As first of all, we take a look at your scoring summary. Garden City took him just a minute 43 to get going in this one. Devin Hodges, a 15-yard touchdown pass from Rhett Reisdorf and made it 7-0. And then we wouldn't see our next score until 440. We'll have to go in the first quarter. William Knight, a 43-yard touchdown run that made it 13 to nothing in favor of the Bronkbusters. However, on the PAT, it would be Coffeyville who blocks the kick, takes it all the way back themselves, to cut the lead to 11 at 13 to 2. Coffee will then pick up another two points on a safety. A minute and 14 seconds later, a beautiful punt set up by George Eberly preceding said safety. And then finally, it would be Devin Hodges, an 18 yard touchdown run that made it 19 to 4 in favor of the Bronkbusters. A couple more touchdowns in the second quarter. Matthew Purnell, backup quarterback for the Bronkbusters, a one yard touchdown run that made it 25 to 4. And then a 17 yard touchdown run for Dedrick Talbert. That made it 32 to 4 at the half. Just one touchdown for both sides in the second half. Garden City would pick theirs up. 9:33 remaining in the third half or the third quarter, I should say. William Knight, 37 yards, and uh, again, Caulfield, their final touchdown. Their one touchdown of the game would come at 4:06 remaining in the fourth quarter of play. Isaiah Taylor, 51 yards from Will Bone. So we take a look at the total team stats here tonight. Caulfield, a normally stout running game that was basically cut off. 31 rushes for 63 yards, 189 passing yards as well. Caulfield just 16 of 43 through the air. Garden City, 20 of 26. They had 302 passing yards, 196 yards on the ground here tonight. And basically, the story of the game, Coffeyville also struggled with turnovers. One interception, three fumbles, two a lost there. So three turnovers overall tonight. And again, Caulfield, they've been a team that thrives through turnovers for the second straight game. They have been held without a turnover here tonight. Leading rusher for Caulfield, that would be Will Bone. 39 yards tonight, along of 29 yards, a 9.8 average. Torrance Farmer, of your three running backs, he carries the most yards. Three rushes for 13 yards. Dorian Lewis, five rushes for 13 yards. And Star Thomas, eight rushes for 11 yards. Passing-wise, Jackson Thompson, 12 of 33 here tonight for 93, 96 yards. Will Bone goes 4 of 10 for 93. 51 yards of those picked up on that touchdown pass. Together, Thompson and Bone eat five sacks here tonight. Receiving wise, Isaiah Taylor. He has himself quite the performance here tonight. He's got to be your player of the game if you look for something here tonight. Five catches for 106 yards and one touchdown. George Eberle, seven punts, 342 yards, an average of 48.9 here tonight. Reese Collier leads the team in tackles with 12 here today. So as we continue on with our post game here today, we got to take a look at what's coming up next week. We touched on it a little bit as we will have Halloween football for you. They'll be taking on the Red Ravens, Will. They'll be taking on the Independence Pirates. Of course, the Pirates will be coming into the game undefeated on the season as they had themselves a bye here this week. Finals from around the Jayhawk Conference. Of course, two games played earlier today. Iowa Central out of conference defeats Highland 41 to nothing, And then finally, Hutchinson defeats Dodge City by 20-32 tonight by final score of 49-17. Don't have a final score from Butler just yet but we'll see if we can't get one for you as I refresh the page. And it is going to be final. Butler all over Fort Scott here tonight, 73-3. So obviously, you take the loss, you come back next week, and you come back a little bit stronger as well. Hopefully you get a good week of practice here. You see where you kind of fell short here tonight against a very stout, very good, very aggressive Bronkbusters team. And who knows? It's a rivalry matchup. There's a lot on the line. There could be some fun in Independence next Sunday. So that'll do it for me here tonight for Nick back in the studio. Excellent job as always. Hopefully Matt will recover. I am Connor Harbett. Have a, I hope you enjoyed listening to this one as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you here tonight. Until next week, you've been listening to Caulfield Red Ravens Football, US 98.1 KUSN. Good night, everybody. Be good people. Panera believes in saying yes. 